citizens of the Republic, welcome to the greatest Star Wars show on YouTube, The Galactic Core, presented by no one. My name's Logan, joined by my co-host Mark. This is the seventh episode of The Galactic Core, a segmented show about everything Star Wars. In today's episode, we have five segments for you, along with a sixth for channel members only. Let me go ahead and send it over to Mark to let you know about all of the segments in today's episode. Our first segment for today's episode is a brand new one, The Galactic Games. Next, we will be heading down to Dexter's Diner for Diner Talk. That will lead into Bounty Boards. Then, we will send it over to Mark for the Netherworld. Then, Climbing the Ranks. And finally, our channel member exclusive bonus segment, The Castle Run. Please leave a comment below and let us know what your favorite thing is about the Galactic Core. We really appreciate all of your guys' feedback. Please also leave a like, subscribe, and possibly think about becoming a channel member today. With that, we will go ahead and send you to our first segment, a brand new segment, The Galactic Games. Welcome to a brand new segment, The Galactic Games. In this segment, me and Logan will be basically just playing a collection of Star Wars games. Uh, this time around, we'll be playing some Ewok Hunt on Star Wars Battlefront 2. If you have any suggestions for any kind of games that you want us to play, go ahead and throw it down in the comments down below, or even in our Discord server, whichever you prefer. And with that, stop wasting time and get right into some Ewok hunt. Actually, I am going to waste a little bit of time, Mark. Okay. I feel like this is pretty important to say. This is your first time ever playing Ewok hunt. This is my first time. I'm I'm a little nervous, I'm not going to lie. I'm <laughs> a little on it. It's right not now. as scary as you think, but I will tell you it is much more fun to be the Ewoks. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've seen people play it i've just never played it myself but it looks like it can get yeah. a little a little terrifying so well hey let's uh see what your first experience is like let's do it don't jump scare me that's all i ask oh god oh my god my teammate's flashing his flashlight in my face <laughs> oh I'm coming at- Oh! No, no. Where is it? I can't see him. I can't see him. Where? Where? <laughs> they keep saying they're Ewok and they, I don't see any of them. Oh! I got one, I got one! <laughs> I got one! No, go run, run! Dude! No! Get out of here! Oh! No, get off me! No! <laughs> I got oh you. my god! <laughs> yeah! <laughs> how do you. There we go, emote. Wait, how do I emote? <laughs> uh, D pad. I can't hit right on the D-pad, and you'll do this trolley one right here. Yeah, the D-pad oh. on my on my keyboard. My bad. Yeah, I don't know how to do it on a keyboard, bro. If I'm being honest. <laughs> I'm right around. I'm literally right around the tree from. Dude, we are. This dude has no oh chance, bro. <laughs> oh my <laughs> god! Everyone's on him. <laughs> this dude. Oh god. Dude, he had no chance, dude. <laughs> Man, no I need chance. I need me and you to be the starting Ewoks. That would be dude. the best part. Now nah, we would tr we straight troll the whole time. Dude, shout out to the visuals on this game, for real. <laughs> 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 
Dude! What? I swear to God, I just hit some dude like 800 times and he didn't die. <laughs> you gotta be joking. Which one are you, Mark? <laughs> Get away from don't touch me. Which one are you, Mark? Keep it together. Transport's on route. Well, if you guys are just gonna sit here and group up like losers, then I can't really do anything. Dude, they're following me, bro. <laughs> like I have, I have it on camp, but <laughs> they're following me. <laughs> Anywhere I'm going, they're following me. <laughs> Yeah, bro, these dudes are just on. Uh, <laughs> I'm just kept running straight. They're right behind me. Let's go. Let's go. go. I was hiding in a bush, bro. I was hiding <laughs> in a bush. <laughs> Alright, let's go. I see you. I know that's you. Yeah, hit that horn. <laughs> Where am I? Yep, yep. I don't know what that was, but... Mm, I can smell you! Dude! <laughs> you know, we, we traded? How did we... How did we trade? <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I'm gonna be 100 percent he... honest with you. I was just I was just whipping my camera around at the <laughs> ground and spraying and hoping that it got you. <laughs> there we go. Look at that. <laughs> oh jeez. Oh, here, uh, here. Turn your light off and I'll give you light. Can you see the rock with my light on it? Am I up here now? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You are. You are. All right, well, I'm not going to have a light on. Uh, what was that? <laughs> did you throw your thermal detonator? No, I did not. What was that? I don't know. Mark. <laughs> what? I'm scared. <laughs> oh! Dude, I <laughs> thought you were getting attacked. <laughs> Bro, to... you can't be doing trying... that. <laughs> I was trying to crouch, bro. <laughs> he, can't, he can't be doing that, Eggs bro. Eggs rolled. Hold up, wait. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> that behind you. Oh, God. Here, wait. Here, turn your, turn your light off. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> uh, dude. You gotta quit. <laughs> dude. Oh my god. <laughs> you gotta start. <laughs> How do I get on? Jeez, well, I think okay. Right now. There, we go. there we go. Let's go, Mark. Let's go. Let's go, dude. That was like, I don't know what that was, but. Yeah, that was the, the longest shuttle. game of all time. Just waiting for the extraction, but. We boarded the shuttle. <laughs> yeah, we got out. We got out. A uh, little bit less vision after multiple blindings, but... Yeah, no, for sure. I think we'll survive. Mark. Come here, my little stormtrooper. I'm just admiring the view. Mark. Oh! Um... What are you doing down there? I think I'm compromised. You're compromised? <laughs> dude, I can't move, bro. You might just You have can't to... move. Nah, dude, I'm Oh, like that's stuck. the edge of the map. <laughs> I'm stuck. I'm stuck. <laughs> I'm com no, I literally wait. can't even like But if I go down there, I'm gonna get stuck. Yeah. Dude, I am compromised, bro. I can't oh. like I I can't. Hey, can you dodge. can you like oh, oh wait wait wait? 
<laughs> oh, I'm stuck again. I'm stuck again. <laughs> oh no, now I'm stuck. <laughs> no, no. I was just trying to admire the view, man, and it's so oh, dark. Oh yeah, I, I can respawn. There we go. I can't see anything, so I just fall <laughs> off. Dude, I saw you start climbing up, and I was like, nope, I gotta kill him. <laughs> <laughs> don't don't throw wispies. Okay. I just hit my horn over here. He's looking over here. <laughs> Wait, I'm gonna try to get behind him, and I'll hit my horn. Okay, he's running away a little bit. He's looking back here again. Dude, this dude is terrified. Look at this dude. <laughs> he keeps looking back. Oh. He see, he see me. I'm jumping on you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he threw a grenade. <laughs> I'm gonna try to play a cutoff. Oh, I see him. Yep, I'm cutting him off. <laughs> I just I'm distracting him right now, I think. I I hit my horn. <laughs> He's, he's on me right now. No, no, no. <laughs> we both hit it. <laughs> I love every time I, he turns around, I like hide behind a tree or something. Oh, he knows I'm here. Oh I my horn God. Behind him. That grenade just demolished me, bro. He's in the cave that we were in. Oh, I don't know where that's at. I'm trying to... Oh, oh wait, yeah, I see right the here, cave. Right here, yeah, yeah, I'm in the cave. Yeah. I'm in the cave. I'm right behind right, him. He, yeah, yeah. I'm going to... Like, Swanton Bomb if you... Oh, never mind. He's running out the other way. That's kind of tragic. Which way did he go out? You're, like, right in front of him. Or not right in front of him. Oh, I see right him. behind him. Oh, yeah. I couldn't get my wispies up there. No. Get over here, you loser. Get over <laughs> here. Oh. He's the last one up, so. Come on. Get over here. No. Oh, we trolled too hard. We yeah, trolled we were... too hard. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> we had to be kind of panicking though. <laughs> he was like constantly looking over his shoulder. Oh my god, dude, he, he was so paranoid. So Mark, how was your first time playing Ewok Hunt? I had a blast. I'm not gonna lie, this was a lot of fun. I just obviously it's kind of unfortunate with us only having like six people usually in the game, but yeah, I can only imagine with like twenty people in a lobby. Like I can only imagine how chaotic that would get. And to be honest, the the stormtroopers definitely have a better chance when there's that many people, just because, you know, it it's it's much harder to get those initial kills to get more Ewoks. Yeah. But once once you have like nineteen <laughs> Ewoks versus one, like it's just it's over. Uh, yeah. No, that was I definitely enjoyed playing the Ewoks more. Yeah. Just trying to mess with people and all of that, but no, that was I mean I had a blast. I've Definitely down to play this again, obviously. This this was just overall fun. I don't have any complaints about it at all. Yeah, hey, that's good to hear, man. Well, if you guys enjoyed this brand new segment, go ahead and let us know down in the comments below. Uh, if you have any suggestions for us, go ahead and let us know as well. And uh, I don't have any really anything uh, else to say here, so we'll go ahead and send it back to the boys in the studio. That was a great new segment. Had a lot of fun making that one. But before we get into our next segment, I'm going to have Logan rate these four things in Star Wars, 1 through 10, with no explanation. You ready for this, Logan? I think I picked out some pretty, uh, pretty good ones here. So, Yeah, I mean, the last time this was on the show... You, I don't think you had a rating less than nine and a half or something. So hopefully <laughs> I can create some diversity here. Hey man, I can't help it. I love Star Wars. So uh, so do I. So let's get right into it here. Uh, your first thing is Gunji's lightsaber. <laughs> Dude. <laughs> 
Man. Nine. Because I don't think it's like the, the, the top tier, but nine. All right. Your second thing? Solo. Mm, seven. Your third thing? Kane and Jarrus. Jeez, dude. Eight and a half. And your fourth and final, the A wing. Dude, nine and a half. Oh, I think that's the a big ten, I think the ten is the Y wing. <laughs> okay, yeah, no, I or the V wing. Ah, uh, now the V wing, wing is probably the ten. <laughs> now the Y wing is still a ten though. But yeah, A wing, A wings are nice. Now, A wings are nice. <laughs> was, I, I can't disagree with that one. It's hard to not want to give an explanation, you know. It it is because you like you say something and you don't want to get flamed for it without giving an explanation for it. Yeah, like ah, uh, man, I don't know. I think I did pretty good, but I just not, I I feel like the ratings speak for themselves. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure. And I think you uh, I think you nailed it on the a lot of the ratings. So. Hey, Logan, I think it's about time to head down to Dexter's Diner. Yeah, man, I'm, I'm 100% down. Let's go. Well, let's send it down to Dexter's Diner for Diner Talk. Welcome to Diner Talk. In this segment, me and Mark are down here in Dexter's Diner, and we are just going to be sitting here having a nice discussion about current things going on in Star Wars. This time around, we are going to be talking about Ahsoka Episode 4 and 5. Episode 6 is out at the time that you're seeing this. Hopefully it's great. I hope you enjoy it. But... Currently, we're only talking about four and five. Uh, We have six main bullet points and topics to nail down on and talk about. So, Mark, why don't we just go ahead and get into this, into the discussion here. Uh, Unfortunately, Dex can't make an appearance. Uh, We're actually here late, and we're going to be the ones closing up. Uh, he's, He's nice enough to let us come down here and do this. So, shout out to him. Wish he was here, but... It's unfortunate. Um, okay, so the first thing I, I kind of want to talk about, we're, we're going to start from the, the fourth episode and go into the fifth. Uh, the fifth is mainly the one that's going to have the most discussion just because it's probably one of the biggest episodes in uh, Star Wars show history. Yep. Uh, at least so far. <laughs> <laughs> but first main thing uh, that I had was... Sabine's decision. So her decision to go ahead and go with Balin, go with uh, Morgan Elsbeth, and go find Thrawn in her hopes to find Ezra. That's kind of the the point that they're going with there. And I, I have a, a couple things written down here. It's it's very broad, but. Is she right or wrong to do this? Do you think? Uh, Just I mean, a, an initial question to ask you. Uh, it's tough because it's like I want to say. I, I, obviously, I want to say no because you're basically running the risk of bringing Thrawn back into the fold, and we all know how dangerous Thrawn can be. Mm-hmm. But on the other hand, we're gonna get Ezra hopefully back okay I yeah mean, that, ma- that makes it good for uh, for the watcher but yeah it, it, like, they're hoping put yourself in her show her, in her shoes within the story like yeah no i i get her like yeah. where mentally she's at obviously because it's tough to just let you know like a close friend go mm-hmm. obviously if i was in her shoes i might have to just bite the bullet and not take that risk of going and getting thrown because he he caused problems for them, like forever. Until Ezra was able to outsmart him, finally, finally outsmart him. Yeah. So I, th- I don't think it was a good idea, obviously, to go. But as a viewer, I'm not gonna complain about it too much. 
Yeah, I mean, you just you got to think uh, think of it also as to me it's it's the wrong decision. I obviously it's yeah. it's made clear that it's the wrong decision. Mm-hmm. Uh, because of what it can and will lead to. But I also just you know Ezra would not want her to make that decision. Exactly. Like and it's just it's tough. <laughs> It, You're it, put it, in a, a tough, tough spot position. there. It is such a tough spot. A spot that I don't want to be in, of course. Yeah, it's it's kind of tragic. But, I mean, I don't... I, I hope that it's... Uh, it. She kind of shows some regret for it. Mm-hmm. Which I think she will. Uh, and then also, she, she doesn't even know that Ahsoka's alive still or uh, i guess technically she wasn't alive for a little bit but yeah no she uh definitely doesn't think she's alive right now anyway yeah so that's where that's at that's my whole kind of thought process on that what's your uh what's your next topic that we got going well my next topic here i mainly wanted to talk about uh balin versus ahsoka I mean, this this whole duel that they had, I thought was great. I mean, you could really see in Balin, like, he, you could see his, like, I don't want to say anger, because it's not anger, but he has a lot of power to him in his strikes. Yeah. And it was quite interesting, because we talked about this, too. Ahsoka only using one lightsaber in that duel. Like, it makes sense, I get it, because... You know, you're one on one, so you don't need like two of them, in like a in like a one one on one duel. But mm-hmm. I thought that was interesting as well to see her fight with one lightsaber. But I mean, the whole with the 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 map in the background and man, it was just super cool to see that. And Balin is, I I think he's one of the coolest dudes hands down in Star Wars. I mean, he yeah. is just so cool. But uh, how do you feel about this duel? I mean, I thought it was great. Uh, I was going to point out, since you were talking about her using one saber, Mm -hmm. uh, I saw someone talking about it, about how it seems as if she is only using two sabers when there's multiple enemies. That has, within the show so far, that's the only time we've seen her use two sabers. Like, uh, on... Is it Corellia uh, that they go to? I, I want to believe. Say I believe it's Corellia, and I say Corellia. Uh, when the one of the HK droids and then Maroc, there, they, since there's two of them, she initially pulls yeah. out two sabers. So then she's fighting Maroc with two sabers eventually because they destroy the droid. But it starts out as that. But yeah. then when. Uh, when she's fighting Maroc in the forest, when uh, Sabine is fighting Shin, she's only using one saber as well, and then goes into Balin only using one saber. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I don't... It, it's weird, but I I mean, I somewhat understand it, I guess. Uh, it's not... It, it's, it's unexpected out of her, so maybe it's kind of putting them on their toes? I don't know. Yeah, no, it does feel a little unexpected from her because we're so used to seeing her with t- the two. Yeah. Like, when she was, uh, well, I'm not going to talk about that, I guess, because that'll be for later, but I will just talk about that later. But, yeah, no, it's we usually see her fight with two, usually, so to see her fight with one, like you said, throughout the whole series as well, it's a little surprising, but mm-hmm. I can kind of understand it, though. It makes, it makes sense. Yeah, uh, but... Overall, to just kind of cap off the episode four discussion a little bit. Uh, again, Hu Yang, amazing in the episode. I mean, yeah. just great. We we got to saw him in action. Pretty sweet. Uh, we were true. We we were correct. In the last diner talk, we talked about Maroc at the very end, yeah. saying we think he's just his own character, and we hope that he's not you know, someone that we actually know. And turns out he's most likely Night Sister Magic. It's not fully explained, but that's what it kind of seems like. Yeah. Uh, so, happy about that. 
Very. And then at the very end, we get the uh, reveal of Anakin. Ahsoka is in what what we believe to be the world between worlds. I don't think it could be anything else. But Mm -hmm. the way that she gets in there is not like we've seen anyone else go into the world between worlds. Like, we don't see anyone pull her in. Not that it's, like, not that no one didn't. Mm -hmm. Not that someone didn't, but we just don't see it. Yeah, and then yeah. the eventual way that she gets out is also not like we've seen before. So, <laughs> yeah. but y- you got to think it's the world between worlds. Uh, it looks like it. Which we will have that discussion. Actually, Mark, oh, let's, let's go ahead into your next point because I think it, it'll work better with the continuity of the of the episode. Okay, okay. Well, now our, my second topic that I wanted to bring to the table was mainly talking about the flashbacks. And the world between worlds. Yeah. So I mean, that... there's so much. Yeah, I get. Yeah, yeah. But there's so much to unpack here. I mean, the... we can start with the flashbacks, for example. I mean, that seeing live action Clone Wars was just absolutely insane. I, the more, like, I slept on it. And the more I think about it, I, I'm, I don't know, man. Like, I was hype about it. And I still am hype about it because I thought it was really cool. But now I don't know if I'd want to see a live action Clone Wars. It just kind of. It, it just doesn't really give me like the Clone Wars feel. You know what I mean? This like, is. Just... This is exactly what I wanted to talk about, Mark. I love yeah, that it, this is the the way that your head is going. Yeah, because I really wanted to see it, and I've I talked about it for a while. I thought it'd be cool. We've seen it. I thought it was cool, but after a couple of days of sitting on it, I don't know. I, I still think it was cool that we got to see that and see Anakin kind of reteaching Ahsoka uh, certain things and making sure she's ready for the journey ahead. But yeah, I don't know. I'm, I'm kind of iffy about a live action Clone Wars if they. I don't think they'll. I don't know though. I, I say that I don't think they'll do it, but I don't know. I don't I really think don't. they will. But, but I think. Yeah. I think the thing about the live action Clone Wars, about why people want to see it and why we would want to see it, or wanted to in the past, mm-hmm. is we wanted to see the live action characters that we know, like Anakin with Hayden Christensen, Obi Wan with Ewan McGregor, like, and uh, Tamara Morrison as any of the clones. Yeah, we Padme, wanted to Sally see Clark. that. But we didn't necessarily want to see the animated characters like Ahsoka in live action. Yeah. Like, I think it's just that other way around. So, I think it just doesn't give that Clone Wars feel because that time period and those characters in that specific time period are tied to the voice actors. And I think making a live, like a full live action Clone Wars series or like, or overdoing it is kind of disrespectful to those voice actors in my opinion yeah uh because they do such a such an amazing job a a lot of people's anakin is matt lanner like Mm -hmm. and you got to give it to him that's it's he Uh, did great as it i think yeah i i thought his performance was great and i was going into it you know all hayden's my anakin you know and he and he still kind of is because that's who i represent uh, Anakin has, but mm-hmm. now nah, he did a phenomenal job in the Clone Wars. With Anakin. Yeah, so I mean, it's just it, it's tough. I di- like I don't I don't necessarily not want to see a little bit more of it because yeah. one thing that I was going to bring up with the flashbacks is in our uh, reaction to the episode. Go ahead and check it out on YouTube if you haven't already on the Star Wars CS channel. Uh, but obviously like as we're watching it, I'm kind of freaking out because it's just so surreal. (laughs) Yeah. And then you, you kind of had the realization when you slept on it. For some reason, I had the realization once the episode ended Yeah, of of just all this stuff. I, I wasn't, I I felt like we could have gotten more. And when I say that, I mean, like, we never saw Tamara Morrison. We didn't see any clones. We didn't see, we didn't even see a clone's face. 
like yeah. not even just Rex, but we didn't see a clone's face. They intentionally covered it up. Whether that was they didn't want to pay Tamara Morrison or they just didn't think it was uh, important for the for the plot. Uh, and then also Ewan McGregor, we could have seen him as Obi Wan in it, but yeah, to their, uh, you know, it it made sense to not see them because the flashbacks are a teaching lesson between Ahsoka and Anakin. That's that's the main point. That's what's focused on, and I think that's that's fine. But when it comes to like a Clone Wars flashback, I think that's just. I wasn't underwhelmed, but I just kind of thought of the possibility of they could, they really could have like destroyed the internet with it because they oh, already yeah. did, and it would have been even crazier if they had even more like that. Yeah, but I I, I do kind of see the side of them not wanting to do that because, mm-hmm. like you were kind of saying, it it would take away from that teaching moment yeah. uh, between Ahsoka and Annie. So, uh. Uh, another thing with the flashbacks, the flashbacks are such a big part that I'm going to definitely bring up a lot of things about it. Mm-hmm. Uh, the other thing, I, I've seen some criticism for it. I've seen yeah. explanations for it, and I'm kind of like, I, I see both sides. But with the flashbacks, all you see is smoke. Mm-hmm. That's literally everything that you see. Somehow yeah. they are just completely covered in smoke. And yeah, I, I, I thought that was a little weird. But... The the explanations I've seen are like, you know, it's it's supposed to be like focusing in on those moments. So it's like Ahsoka's memories, like blocking out everything else. Yeah, and like there, it's very vague past that point. So it's just smoke. It's you you can't see anything within that memory outside of that. Which yeah, that makes sense. I get that. It's more of like a, a fog of war thing around them. It's very honing in on what's going on within that small area. Um, but it was also very obvious to me that it's budget. <laughs> oh yeah, no, it's, like just to keep it blunt. It's budget, but like they just came up with the reason for it, which it makes sense. Obviously, because but we we talked about in the last diner talk, we talked about the production quality within those first three episodes. Something I noticed as soon as the flashback started, I felt like the progr- uh, the production quality dropped within the flashbacks. Just I within agree. the flashbacks. Everything else is great. But mm-hmm. for some reason, they just feel a little bit off with the no, rest of the production quality. Yeah, I do. I agree too. And whether that's because of like the smoke and everything or just – the costumes, the whatever it may be, I don't know. I, it was just something felt off with the quality of it, and it just didn't feel uh, connected in in that regard. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I think the last sort of thing I want to bring up specifically about the flashbacks uh, kind of pose a question to you as well. Do do you think? that these were fan service not necessarily fan service but were they necessary were they necessary to the plot <sighs> fan service gets thrown around, around quite a bit too and too much like, in my opinion yeah i agree as well cuz i feel like it gets misused um mm-hmm. i don't think this is fan service cuz he's I mean, he's trying to go back and teach her the lessons from before. That's kind of the vibe I was getting, like, mm-hmm. like lessons throughout the Clone Wars that he was trying to teach her. But obviously, she wasn't really like grasping onto that at the moment, like live or die. You know, like that's kind of what he was. Um, Anakin was talking about. So that's kind of where, that's kind of how I thought about it as. So I would not say it's fan service at all. Um, I think it actually is a pretty it's a good way to kind of reteach a lesson i think yeah like it's an interesting way to reteach a lesson that's kind of the way i look at it i i don't think it's fan service because it is doing this like big thing that you know is going to get a reaction out of the fans 
with a purpose it it does have a purpose you're you're seeing this teaching moment which i guess this can actually i no i don't want to lead it into our into our next topic because i do have one final thing to say but I it's uh have something to bring up as well really quick it's like it, it's teaching a lesson like 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 you're saying and we'll talk about the lesson here in in a few minutes but it's just if you're gonna have that i think it just makes sense and you're pleasing the fans because you're because the thing is i think people would have still been high on the show if they weren't there yeah for sure but they're there they're great and they greatly increase ahsoka's character development just within that one episode it turns her into a completely different person than she was before she went into the world between worlds and now that she's out like she's completely different uh what what was the last thing you wanted to say i just wanted to bring up towards the end of those flashbacks when hayden was finally done and he had the teacher lesson the hard way ignites the red lightsaber and just the duel between them right there was so good and then when he when he like kicked her back out and they went back in the world between worlds <laughs> and he came out of the smoke and he did that little shoulder shrug dude mm-hmm. and, the, and it had like the vader like it was flashing in vader and anakin that might be top five moment for me maybe top three yeah that was just i got chills watching that bro dude and chills I, I i love the like a, another thing i didn't mention is i love that this version of ahsoka being live action this younger version of ahsoka really shows how young she is at those points i feel like you don't really get that feeling in the clone wars she yeah, is incredibly young oh yeah so i i love that but with that uh that duel when it starts when it is uh siege of mandalore ahsoka Mm -hmm. versus vader (laughs) she gets demolished oh like she she does it's like it's it's only like 10 to 15 seconds does not stand a chance not even a close kicks her back into the world between worlds she it's then her grown self and Mm -hmm. she puts up the puts up a fight and wins the fight Mm -hmm. like i thought that was a great detail that she just gets (laughs) unreal like Mm -hmm. it's crazy that she did not stand a single chance the power in the swings all brutal then she then then he pulls the move uh that he did to to obi-wan like oh holding the (laughs) holding the arm back dude that was so cool there's also one moment i don't i don't know if you've seen it but right before he kicks her she like like it, it so he he does that move like holding her arm back and then like kind of throws her back and she swings at him Mm-hmm. It it goes through him. Okay, I don't no, I know. Didn't if, see that. Yeah, I don't know if it's intentional or if it's a mistake. I would yeah, assume I it's know. intentional. But yeah, she swings and it straight up goes through his neck. Like I didn't even see that. I'm gonna have to rewatch that. Uh, yeah, I'm trying uh, to find it, but it's <laughs> it's weird. But I think that would be, like, if it is intentional, I kind of understand it because it's, like, showing that Anakin actually isn't there. Like, she can't do anything to Anakin. Exactly. Uh, So that was something I wanted to point out. But, yeah, I mean, just absolutely crazy duel. Uh, Last thing for this this topic that I was going to bring up since we brought up the World Between Worlds. I, I genuinely would like if there was a confirmation on if it is the world between worlds and why if it is the world between worlds which i'm like it has to be it it looks like kind of like how it did in rebels like it mm. looks similar that's kind of 
I, I would like the explanation of why it worked the way it worked or how it worked that way compared to how it did in Rebels, you know? Yeah, because it's like a cheat code for her at this point. We've talked mm -hmm. about this where it's like... Yeah, it, oh, it just, it just seemed like Warp random that she ended up there. Yeah, and I don't... I don't know if we'll ever get an explanation because I want to say like you know maybe Anakin pulled her in, but I. But then I how know. does she get out? Because like it's shown yeah. in Rebels that you have to jump back through the port or go back through the portal, but yeah, I she just know. like, it just turns into water and it's it puts her uh, under the water back into the water. Yeah, like so. I don't know. Uh, it's 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 a weird way to use it, but. Yeah. Uh, hopefully we do get some maybe we'll get some discussion with Hu Yang in episode 6 so we'll see there but uh, I guess to get now into my next topic which we can segue well into this uh, Ahsoka's lesson which it's kind of just the question of what is the lesson because I think that's another discussion that, I, that I've seen about this episode is and it's a reason why people are talking about was the clone, were the flashbacks fan service because they're saying was there really a lesson? Uh, there's like, always what's, a lesson. Like what's the what's the lesson that he's really teaching? Because it's it's not very uh, it, it's it's very vague. It's not show, like said directly what the real lesson actually is. Uh, so I've seen a bunch of different discussions about what it is. Uh, we've got. Legacy, which to me that's probably the biggest thing. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, Anakin. He he tells Ahsoka that her legacy is built from all of the ones before her, like everyone yep. before her. Which, again, Mark, we we talk about this scene so much on. <laughs> on the galactic core but the scene in episode 8 it just continues to get better <laughs> oh, Yoda yeah, no, saying it's... they are what we grow beyond yeah no nah, it's yeah that that scene is just phenomenal honestly uh, but or we are what they grow beyond sorry I got yeah, it wrong yeah. uh, but essentially saying that you're you're from this legacy he has passed down his knowledge to her which is essentially the knowledge from Obi-Wan from Qui-Gon from Count Dooku from Yoda like Yoda, it's yeah. built it's all of this knowledge built down and it's her time to pass it on to Sabine um which is a crazy like mm -hmm. lineage by the way that's insane yeah. but then you know Ahsoka kind of goes against it and is like yeah, Anakin, you do have a legacy, but it's of death and uh, God. What's the other word that she uses? Death, death and destruct. Did she use destruction? destruction or something, like something like that. But it's you know very negative connotation, uh, mm -hmm. which for good reason she says that. But yeah, I think then that turns it into her learning that th she is this legacy of everything before her. But her legacy is also her own. Yeah. And everything before it doesn't necessarily matter to her own legacy. Just because Anakin turned into what he did doesn't mean she will and doesn't mean someone that she teaches will. Yeah. Because uh, she kind of goes through that with uh, Grogu in, in The Mandalorian. Like, she doesn't want to teach him because she is afraid of what could happen. Mm -hmm. and that's kind of the le that's why i feel like this is the biggest point of of the lesson is she then gets out of the world between worlds and she is at peace essentially like she has come to that realization that she is she i i have this written down she's not the cause of what anakin became yeah and she She's not destined for that same fate as well. Yes. Like, yeah, I get what you mean. I, I, th I do think that's a big part of what he was trying to teach her for sure. And and also, another teaching point is, and it, th this is in the the early flashback, uh, the flashback of early Clone Wars when 
she's she's saying like am all I get like I only know how to fight like that's the only thing I know that's all I've been taught yeah. uh, and Anakin is kind of saying like it's you just have to adjust to the times we were mm-hmm. keepers of the peace now we're soldiers I have to teach you how to fight and I think that's another realization that she has where she realizes that that's what she's teaching Sabine. And that's the only thing she's been teaching Sabine, really. It's the only thing she knows. And she now realizes that that's not what it means to be a Jedi. Mm -hmm. And she needs to teach Sabine differently. And I think... The the way I kind of thought about it was it, it reminded me of the original trilogy and how Luke is taught. Yep. Luke, in A New Hope, Obi-Wan is teaching him, like, the, the basic, like, lightsaber stuff, but then is telling him to, you know, feel the Force and have that guide him. And initially, like already catches on right away but then past that you don't you don't see any saber training but that's like all we've seen with sabine really yeah sabine's already a warrior she doesn't she doesn't need to learn how to fight she knows how to fight she needs to learn how to be a jedi and luke goes from that small lesson with obi-wan to then going to yoda does not pull out the lightsaber. Like, no, there is no any... lightsaber training. It is just completely a force lesson of, how, like, yeah. learning how to be a Jedi. And to be honest, that's kind of shown in, in Return of the Jedi. He is not the, the greatest with the, with the <laughs> lightsaber. He's just kind of swinging it around like crazy. Yeah. <laughs> so, but everyone knows how powerful of a Jedi... Luke is, and I think it's mostly because of his connection with the Force. Yeah, I... And, go ahead, my bad. Uh, it's just, like, that's... I, I feel like Ahsoka has definitely realized that now. That's... Yeah. She doesn't... She was taught like that because of the time period, and that's not how to teach a Jedi. Yeah. You know, being, a, being a Jedi is... It's more than just sitting there and swinging a saber. Mm-hmm. Essentially, it's. I mean, that's this is why I, I think that Yoda's like got to be the greatest teacher. Yeah. In all of Star Wars, he, like you said, he doesn't have Luke pull out the lightsaber once. It's about feeling the Force around you, um, keeping an open mind, not acting on your feelings, like just kind of like clearing your mind, and you're just the only thing is the Force that's that's really what it is to be a jedi it, it kind of like a summary i guess not like a full in-depth explanation but that's kind of yeah. what i think about being a jedi is, is there's nothing but the force so that's why i really like that like her realizing that and mm-hmm. it's it's a really cool lesson it's a cool way to teach it i guess yeah so i i think ahsoka definitely learned something within this i i think all of that all of the flashbacks and everything just to encompass this whole entire uh, last couple points. It makes sense to do it. And Mm -hmm. could it have been done a different way? Yes. But it was so cool. And I think it was just, it could have been done a different way, but this was the perfect way to do it. Yeah, no, I agree. So I'm glad it happened. I do think there's a lesson. Obviously we just, kind of explained our thoughts on the lesson but now we can uh finally move on and and go (laughs) ahead to to your final point here all right well my third and final point kind of want to talk about uh jason sandula's uh future here because it's a little unknown but he has shown signs of kind of connecting with the force and like him hearing um ahsoka and anakin like out in the out in the water and him like hearing the lightsabers i that, go ahead that that's another like thing that makes 
like the world between worlds thing weird dude it's i don't understand it and i don't know if we ever will so that yeah that's what makes me think like is it is it the world between worlds like mm-hmm. it has to be because what else it would it like be it. it looks like it <laughs> yeah what else would it be but they're just kind of they're kind of changing the rules on it a little bit yeah th- uh, and this planet is so weird because it's yeah. got like the world between worlds and you can hear like he heard it and then you got the pearls flying around on this planet like this planet is like weird yeah so i don't know but uh anyway i'm kind of interested to see like if they expand on jason's character a little bit i'm i'm hoping Mm -hmm. they they really do and i'm hoping we actually get to see him eventually down the line whether it's ahsoka or sabine or you know kind of him training with the force and seeing like if because he he already kind of seems like his dad a little bit like kanan he he kind of has characteristics of kanan which i absolutely love because i love kanan he 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 is a true embodiment of what a jedi should be um so i'm kind of hoping that they kind of stick with his character because i think his character could be really good here and try to see him evolve and him become a jedi become a even a greater jedi than his father hopefully Mm -hmm. i mean i think that would be great so yeah i that moment of of him and hera standing listening to the water i don't know if if you picked up on i didn't pick up on it initially but the the music at that at that time you can like slightly hear kanan's theme Mm -hmm. which is pretty sweet i I thought that that was was cool uh but it's just it's it's such an underrated moment from that episode i think i agree Uh, i also don't know if you noticed but he he has like the same pauldron like the same armor as as kanan oh really yeah i didn't yeah. pick up on that that's it's actually like the sick, exact dude. same thing it's oh awesome. dude that's so sick so yeah that's i i would love to see more of jason i'm i'm expecting we're gonna see more of him uh but i think it's cool that he's it's it's unintentional unintentional connection to the force yeah and i love it's, it goes to show that he he seems to be pretty kind of strong with the force i think he could Mm -hmm. be a pretty powerful jedi here hopefully yeah and i'm wondering if they're gonna kind of hint at like sabine being the teacher essentially that would be really Uh, cool but we'll we'll see we'll see um but i guess the final main point here we we can maybe after this maybe talk about some miscellaneous things but uh, final thing was just character performances all around. Uh, specifically, like you got to talk about the highlight of of Hayden. Oh man, he every time he's on my screen, he's it's a highlight. So this uh, this might be his best Anakin performance. I would agree. Genuinely. I yeah, no, I agree. I think he really he nailed this performance. I I think he nailed every performance, but this one's like has a different feel to it. Like he. He really does feel like a teacher in this moment. Mm-hmm. And in the in the flashbacks, it he <laughs> definitely tried to make his voice sound closer to Matt Lanning. And it is mm-hmm. That's it's cool. scary, actually. That was cool. Because I always thought that they didn't sound similar whatsoever. Yeah. But in them, like he did something where he definitely <laughs> he made it seem like it. And just him i just the, the the little mannerisms that he has like like you talk like the shoulder shrug as he's walking Aww, like so stuff cool. like that like is, is stuff you you don't really pick up on but if it wasn't there it would seem weird mm-hmm. uh him him saying like like ahsoka saying this is the clone war them saying <laughs> No kidding. Like yeah, no kidding. <laughs> that's that's such a Clone Wars Anakin thing to say. Yeah. But it's Hayden dude. saying it. It was perfect. It's like I I think it was written great and he absolutely killed it. Yeah. Knocked it out of the park. He obviously the uh the saber fights, uh, he has not dropped the ball whatsoever. He's it's just like uh it it's just like 18 years ago 
<laughs> Dude, it feels just like 2005 watching him with a lightsaber. It was, it was beautiful. It's so beautiful to watch. He hasn't lost a step at all, and I just, I love to see it. I just love to see it. Uh, and then I wanted to talk about young Ahsoka and uh, current Ahsoka, which I, I wrote down old, which is funny because <laughs> Anakin says, "Oh, you look old." <laughs> yeah that, that was dude, that's so funny uh but i i think again they're both of those are great performances i think rosario oh, dawson yeah. is is doing amazing and now that she's kind of flipped and seems more like the younger ahsoka after this whole teaching lesson like she there's there's so much life brought back into the character and she was like she was how she was before that for a reason Mm -hmm. and kind of having the weight lifted off her shoulders with that with that lesson now brings her back into kind of a character that we really know and have connected to so i think that's amazing young ahsoka is great Mm -hmm. Uh, like i said earlier really shows the age and just I think also another great performance. How how are you feeling about Ahsoka? Oh, I'm loving Ahsoka's character right now. Rosario Rosario Dawson is doing a great job. Um and I've really liked young Ahsoka's performance as well. I've seen some stuff on Twitter about people not really liking it, like the young Ahsoka performance, and I don't I don't know why. Like mm-hmm. I thought uh she did a great job playing young Ahsoka. I mean I it it obviously it didn't look like Ahsoka, obviously, but like you said, it kind of shows her age in that moment. And yeah, like it wasn't too far off of how like Ahsoka would react in these moments. I, I think like mm-hmm. like oh, this is the Clone Wars, and you know her being all shocked about being back in the Clone Wars, and I don't know. It's just I I have no complaints with it whatsoever. I thought the performances were great from both. Yeah, and I guess final performance that I kind of wanted to to mainly talk about, which. I mean, we we kind of already talked about it, but it was Balin I, I wanted to mention. Just so amazing. Unreal, mm-hmm. to be honest. It's just... Uh, it's top-notch. Yeah. I, I don't think they could have picked anyone better to play the role. Not it is all. absolutely tragic that he can't see, like, how much the Star Wars community loves what what mm-hmm. he's done with the character. Now, Balin is, like I said, he's becoming one of my favorite characters. Mm-hmm. Um, Ray Stevenson, that's his, the name of the actor, right? I, yes, I believe so. Okay. Yeah, no, it's sad to see that, you know, Ray could, could, can't be here to see such the positive uh, response that he's gotten to this character, but I'm glad he got to play this role. Um, I'm sure he had a lot of fun with this role. I can tell he did a. He hit it out of the park with this role. I just, Mm -hmm. I can't say enough good things about him. He plays it perfectly down to a T. Yeah. Uh, Out of, like, complaints for the show, I don't think I would have a single one about any of the performances. No, the performances are phenomenal. Because off the top of my head i don't even think i have any complaints anyway uh but oh no i don't <laughs> if i had one it definitely wouldn't be about the about the the actors performances mm-hmm. so i could tell you that um i i thought i had some some sort of general points that i wanted to talk about but they're kind of escaping my mind at the moment so is there anything that we didn't really cover here that you kind of at least wanted to maybe bring up um uh, not much just you know who yang has been great some more character performances hera is great as well oh yeah, that Ch- was that was one that i missed i, I definitely mm-hmm. wanted to talk about hera i think that's next level as well yeah no her her performance is great i think that character is like the way she acts is just she's spot perfect. on it's perfect you couldn't do it better i don't think And uh, Chopper has also been uh, really great as well. Yeah, I will say. I mean that one. That that one was kind of a given that it was gonna be good. Oh, dude, Chopper is. 
I love Chopper. He's so funny. Uh, but I, I mean, we can we can go ahead and call the diner talk there. But uh, I I do think I still have some things that are escaping my mind. Like I said, so I apologize if we didn't cover everything and kind of didn't clarify on some things. We do our best around here. We we do yeah, our there's... best. There's a lot to talk about in these two episodes. Yes, the, these two episodes were very filled with, with a whole bunch of things. Uh, a lot yeah. of, like a lot of different callbacks. I I guess one one last thing, just because I said about the callbacks, I don't know if you you probably have picked it up because you've seen things about it. Uh, right at the start, when uh, when Anakin and Ahsoka are about to start fighting, and Ahsoka says, "I won't fight you." Yeah. It's a call back to mm-hmm. Luke saying it, and then Anakin yeah, he goes, says, "I've heard that before." Heard that before, yep. like, oh my god, nah, that stuff like that insane. is super subtle, but it's just such a good line. It's perfect. Uh, so that just from from the intricate little details, I think they killed it on on the fifth episode. For this fourth episode was amazing as well, uh, but. I'm I'm so excited to see what the sixth and then I'm assuming seven and eight are gonna be just next level Star Wars, to be honest. Getting Thrawn, hopefully getting Ezra, like mm-hmm. we're only like I feel like it's I feel like we're at a high right now, like at the peak. But dude, we could keep going up. Like Yeah. <laughs> we could easily keep going up from here and I'm I'm excited. Um but yeah, that'll uh That'll conclude the diner talk. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. Uh, we will be back in the next Galactic Core episode with another diner talk. It's going to be a little bit different. It's not going to be about Ahsoka. We're going to be talking about some stories within the new uh, Return of the Jedi from a certain point of view book. Uh, 40 short stories from 40 authors. We're going to pick a couple to talk about. Uh, and we're, we're going to go off of that. And... That will come out the day after the Ahsoka finale. That's the reason we're doing it, because our next Diner Talk, when we talk about Ahsoka, which will be in two episodes from now. Yep. So this is the seventh episode of the Galactic Core. In the ninth episode of the Galactic Core, we will be talking about Ahsoka, just the full series as a whole. Uh, Going to be a great one. So looking forward to that, but the next one's going to be good as well. So make sure you tune in uh, for that. Again, thank you to Dex for letting us be down here in the diner. Unfortunately, he, c- he couldn't be here, but uh, it's just uh, it's, it's, it's great being down here in the diner with you, Mark. Oh, yeah. No, I love being down here. And don't worry, Dex. We'll get this place spotless in no time. For sure. And we'll... <laughs> We got to get out of here soon because I, I got to get to bed. I know you got uh, you got to go to course on you in the morning. So actually, I get I get Fridays off at course on you know, oh, university. Oh wow, so, that's crazy. So I'm pretty I'm gassed about that. So we might have to stay here a little bit longer then. <laughs> hey, I'm, <laughs> I'm down to chill. <laughs> <laughs> but with that, we will go ahead and end off this uh, this episode. This segment of diner talk and we will send you back to the boys at the desk hopefully you guys enjoyed that diner talk now before we get into our next segment we have a special interview for you guys with a special guest our first returning guest round of applause everyone boba fett is in the building today round of applause for boba fett so boba fett it's great to have you back again uh this time around you're you're actually a little bit older. It's it's nice having you here, man. How you doing? I am Boba Fett. Um, I already knew that, man. I, I've interviewed you before, but to actually start the interview, uh, I actually wanted to know how did it feel to be in the Sarlacc pit, like a banta. All right, I'm I'm not even gonna question that. Uh, where have you been living after you've been in the Sarlacc pit? The sons of Tatooine. Oh, okay. I, I've actually heard it was pretty hot out there. Is that, is that the case? I have to confess, I thought you were gone. What? 
I owe you a nice long soak in the back to tank when this is done. Honestly, man, I'll take you up on that offer. Uh, I'll meet you down the hall in a couple minutes. Yo, Logan, I just passed Boba Fett down the hall. Uh, he said you were going with him? Yeah, man, he offered me a soak in the back to tank. I, I have to take it. Oh, okay, that's sweet, dude. Let's just go ahead and send it over to the next segment then. Well, as you can see, Logan has to go with Bubba Fett to take a soak down in his back to tank on Tatooine. So we'll just go ahead and send it over to our next segment, Bounty Force. Welcome to Bounty Boards. In this segment, me and Logan will be going head to head in Star Wars character Bingo, or in this case, Django. Uh, this works just like regular Bingo, uh, five by five grid, horizontal, vertical, and diagonal uh, to get a Django. If there is a scenario where we cannot get a Django, it'll just be who can get more spots and they'll win. Uh, and to get a spot, you have to guess the character name correctly, and we can pick anywhere on the board uh, to guess this character. So, Logan, how you how you feeling right now? You ready to uh, get into some Django here? I am... See, I'm the reigning champion at the moment. Yeah. Which I felt good about on the last one. This one, we've agreed that it needed to be a little bit easier. Yeah, it was very difficult last time. But I don't know. I can't gauge whether we both made it the same difficulty this time around. Yeah. I feel like I, last time it was pretty even. This time yeah. around, I don't know. And you have a tendency to forget even the most popular names of characters. So it's very tough to pick for you sometimes. Yeah. Uh, but... I will warn you, there is one on here specifically <laughs> that I know you will not get. <laughs> I just felt like including it. So I hope I hope I actually pick the spot for this. Yes. Because I actually want to know like who it is. Yeah, I so. would like you to pick it as well. <laughs> <sighs> well, let's quit wasting time. Let's get right into some Django. Okay, Mark. I am uh, my first one. Let's let's go with A3. Let's try to connect with this free space. A3. Your character is... Okay, that's Fox. That is Fox. Oh, no. Uh, I'm ha okay, first off, I'm happy I got it right. <laughs> but, <laughs> but that makes me... Uh... <laughs> it makes me feel like uh, that makes me feel like I made mine too difficult. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> All right, Mark. Well, I got mine. So, where do you want to start out? Hmm. Let's go A three. I'll go in the same spot. Oh my god. Okay. <laughs> A three, Mark. Your character is... <laughs> is... Is that Lot Dodd? That is Lot Dodd. <laughs> <laughs> I think he looks familiar. <laughs> yeah. uh, see, that's, a, that's one of those ones where if we didn't just have, for some reason, some weird obsession with lot dodd you would not get it <laughs> but but lot dodd is the boy so where are you feeling right now logan where do you where do you want to where you want to go next um i mean i could go anywhere in this row I, i'm just gonna go j3 i'll clear off the left side if i can yeah yeah i gotcha i gotcha your character is oh oh no oh I know it. 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 Uh, Mary Elsbeth. Mm, I, I mean, you got her last name right. 
Is it not Mary? It's Morgan. Elspeth. Oh my god! Yeah, I don't. No, I don't deserve. Why, <laughs> dude? Okay, you want to know why I said that? Oh, uh, why? Because of the actress that plays Hera. Her her name is oh. Mary Elizabeth. I got you. <laughs> it, oh my god! No, I'm actually so mad at myself for that because I should have gotten it. Oh my god. Oh man. Oh, that's that's a great way to start this out is me just being mad. Okay, Mark. Well, you're you have a chance to start out better than me. Where you want to go? Let's go. I'll go G3. Okay. I yeah, I was hoping you would go different from me. G3, your character is <laughs> Is it Agent Kolar? Oh my god. It is Agent Kolar. Let's go. Dude, baby. I thought that was gonna be that was gonna be a little bit tougher for you. Let's I'm go. happy you got that one though. I'm actually happy you got it. Okay, well, I have uh destroyed that middle row for me and the <laughs> J column, so uh, I'm just gonna see if I can go down the center. I'm gonna go N two. N two. Your character is <laughs> okay. I got I got this one. I got this one, Mark. That's okay. Terrace and Nube. It is Terrace and Nube. Oh my god! Got to get Morgan, back on the dude. board here. Morgan, Morgan. Oh my <laughs> god! I'm so mad. <laughs> <laughs> what am I feeling here? What am I feeling? <laughs> Keep going down the line here. Give me O three. Uh, all right, Margo. O three. Oh man. Your character is. Is it Corday? Oh my God! You sold it. No, it's, it's not. Dorme. Oh, it's Dorme. Dorme, and you knew it. I got him mixed up. You knew it was Dorme. No. I gave you Corday on the last one. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> no. You sold it, Mark. You sold it. <laughs> okay, now we're now we're both mad, so oh, it's good. It, it evens out. No way, man. Oh god. Okay, well, I've I've definitely regained some composure after after that one. I do <laughs> I I, I I feel bad that you missed it, but and I lost some, but oh well. I feel what good for myself do? that I have uh, <laughs> I, I possibly have a better chance now. Uh, let's let's continue with the N column. Let's start at the top and go with N one. N one it is. Your character is. Oh my god. Oh my god, I don't I I'm just going to say I don't know it. But I'm I'm going to say as I was building my board for you, I <laughs> saw this character's name. But it is so out there that I I don't know it. <laughs> All right, well his name is I don't know how to say his first name, uh Sicatro Vizago. Yeah, there like there's no way I was pulling that out. Yeah, he's he's from Rebels, so yeah. I figured I'd pull out a Rebels character. Mm. Okay, Mark, where where you want to go now, man? <laughs> uh, well, after I sold that last one, I <laughs> I might have to go. Let me go. O one. O one. Oh, so you're gonna go diagonal? Yeah, I'm gonna try to hit the diagonal here. Okay. Mark, your character is. Oh my gosh! What's his <laughs> name, bro? You gotta be kidding me! Oh my gosh! I'm not even gonna sit here and waste my waste time. I obviously know who it is. I don't remember his yeah. name though. This is one of those ones where if you gave me it, I'd get it on the spot for, like, no yeah. reason. But this is C.O. Bibble. Bibble, that's it. C.O. Bibble, <laughs> that's it. Gosh, man. 
just haven't heard his name enough for me to remember it, but I yeah. recognize that face anywhere. Okay. Um, I'm going to be honest. I think my play is going to probably end up being diagonal as well. I kind of like that A2 spot. It's going to give me info on the diagonal and the the column in the row there. So, Your character is... Is that is that not pre Vizsla? That is pre Vizsla. Okay, I, I for a second there he looked a little weird, and I was yeah. <laughs> hoping it wasn't some rando. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was hoping that wasn't gonna throw you off too much. Yeah. All right, let's see where I want to go here, because I already took out the so the O column completely useless. I could throw it out of the way now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm not even gonna worry about it. Um. Well, I guess the bottom spot, but let's go N one. N one. Okay, so N1. you're getting, you're you're eyeing up that N column. I like it. I like nope. it. Your character is. I think it starts with a with a D. I want to say. <laughs> What's the thought process? Dryden Voss. Dryden Voss is correct, Mark. I, I knew you had that one in you. I knew okay, you had that go. one in you. There we go. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm, I mean, my board is looking... We're looking pretty healthy right now. Yeah, you're not looking too bad. We've got, we've got a, a row and a column there that are still alive, and we have the diagonal. And I think yeah. I'm going to try out the diagonal. I'm oh, going to go man. ahead with J1. Oh, feeling bold here. I actually probably diagonal. should have went N four, but we're gonna we're gonna go J one. Your character is <laughs> Marva. It is Marva. Let's Marva and or. Oh my god! The haggy is still alive. Oh, I'm feeling good, Mark. I'm feeling good. <laughs> uh, dude, they, I feel so much better. <laughs> than than the start of this i'm gonna be honest oh yeah no you yeah you brought it back that's for sure we're recovering god morgan elspeth dude <laughs> that's gonna haunt me i mean i got this one alive right now i'm feeling kind of good about it let's go let's go n2 let's just keep going down the line okay i, I like your thought process here n2 mark your Ooh. character is what the who is that? <laughs> <laughs> he looks trolly. <laughs> he looks so trolly. <laughs> I mean, I don't even. I I. The only character that even looks semi like that. That's like I'm thinking of in my head is low gray. Is that your final guess? I mean, it's not wicked or chirp, but like it's. I'm just gonna guess low gray. If it's wrong, it's wrong. It is low gray, Mark. Okay, let's go. Let's <laughs> oh my go. god, Dude, he looks so trolly in that. Oh yeah, <laughs> he looks great. <laughs> Dude, this is Mark. This is shaping up to be the Django game of a lifetime. Word. Shout out to Galaxy of Heroes. I wouldn't have known that otherwise. Oh yeah, we <laughs> dude, we both have three in a row right now. We're cooking. This can, this can come down to the wire. I have to not. I I have the <laughs> advantage of being one turn ahead. So mm. it's all up to me if I choke. Essentially. Yeah, yeah. Okay, Mark. I'm gonna have to continue. I'm gonna have to continue with this diagonal. <laughs> I don't blame uh, you. Do I want to go? Uh, let let okay. Let's let's do it as a true all in a row. Let's let's get G G four. I like it. I like it a lot. Try to keep the hot street going here. Your character is. Oh my god! What is that? A joke, Mark? <laughs> The funny thing is, I feel like I know the character. 
I just I just can't scrape it out of my brain. What is it? This character's name is Zuckus, I believe that's how you say it. Oh, okay. I wasn't pulling was, that number one. He was the uh he was in that episode five with the bounty hunters. I believe he was next to Forlom. Yeah. Mark, I think I sold the game. That's essentially what I'm getting at. I think I sold the game right there. Uh oh. Because I'll be honest, I think I have some faith in you. All right. Let's keep going down the line here. <sighs> Hit up N4. Yeah. Okay, we're going to go N4. <laughs> Man, I sold. Okay. Your character is. Dude, I don't think I know who that is. Oh, my God. <laughs> I don't think I know who that is. <laughs> you gotta be kidding me. I guess we both just sold. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I don't think I know who that is. Oh my god. I don't know. I go. I literally have no idea. It's Sifo Diaz, Mark. Oh my. What? <laughs> <laughs> Um, dude, <laughs> this is just tragic for us. Dude, I, right now. I'm gonna be honest. I I thought I was done for. I thought I was done for. <laughs> this is just, dude, this is tragic. Bro. This I'll is I'll tragic. reveal to you right now that I specifically had one row and one column that I felt like if you stuck to it, you would probably get them, and it is the two that you have done so far it was the end column and then the very middle row uh, <laughs> uh that so sucks. that is that is kind of tragic not not saying that you can't get a django anywhere else but it's oh, kind of tragic now that is very tragic all right well the diagonal's gone yep so i might as well try to continue to knock out two birds with one stone here i have i have two plays a5 and O2. Because it'll knock out the the Django that I possibly have going there. And also the column and the bottom row. Yeah. So, I'm feeling a little bit better about O2. Your character is... Oh, dude... It's the dude from Mando. It is. I don't I don't know his name. No, that one. <laughs> yeah, no, that one's got me. What is it? Uh Valen Hess, I believe. Oh. Yeah, I I mean I wasn't pulling it, but you see it, dude. <laughs> Mark, this isn't good. You realize this isn't good. <laughs> No, this isn't good for either of us right now. Because we, we tried to make this easier on purpose, and we're still going to get to the point where it goes until, like, like <laughs> one of us isn't going to get a Django, probably. I mean, what's even alive? I got diagonal from J1 to O5. You, at, you have J, J, A, and G alive, G. and then uh, the two row and the five row. All right. Give me, give me G four because I'll knock two, two out there if I don't get it. So, okay, wait, G four? Oh yeah, it yes. knocks out the diagonal. Yep. Didn't even realize that. Okay, Mark G four. Your character is. I know her name. I just got <laughs> I got Terra Sanube stuck in my head. Mark, I'm. <laughs> It is unreal how many times I have talked about this character, said this yeah. character's name, and showed you this character, mm -hmm. and you still cannot pull the name out of your <laughs> out of your head. I'm gonna be honest; it's a little forgettable. If I'm being honest, just because I don't. <laughs> oh. <laughs> ah, whatever. I go up. I'm not gonna waste time. Jacosta it's new. That's it. I'm not even going to waste time. <laughs> Dude, Mark, that is like, that right there is the reason that it's so hard for me to pick ones for you. <laughs> it's like, 
I, I feel like I've said it a million times. <laughs> and you still won't get it. That's my weakness, dude. She's my weakness. Oh, That's God. one that I'll just never, I'll never learn her name. That's just one I'll <laughs> never learn her name. I mean, you might as well give me the one that I was talking about and give me uh, A5. All right, A5 it is. Because other than this, I'll have a diagonal alive if I get this wrong. And I believe that'll be it. All right. Your character is... Dude. <laughs> See, you know my weakness, too. I Rebels' did. characters are my weakness. I don't know. <laughs> His name is Tristan Wren, Sabine's brother. The fact that this is about to go to another, like, sudden death, whoever gets the most wins, is kind of upsetting. Because the whole point of this segment is who gets Django first. And we're not getting and Django. And no one is ever going to actually get a Django. <laughs> Gotta start throwing Anakin on you. I, apparently. I, dude, I hope, <laughs> I hope that diagonal is, is easy for me. I st- but I still have all four spaces to go on it. So... Oh, yeah, that's true. Who knows? Okay, where do you want to go? Well, I already took out the diagonal, so I don't have diagonals left, and I don't have G, (laughs) so I guess we'll just uh, hit up A1. A1, okay. Yep. A1, Mark, your character is... (laughs) I'm a... I'm a gun die. That is correct, Mark. It is I'm a gun die. But we're we're back Let's on go. the train, dude. Let's we go. gotta start Let's... getting some correct. We gotta start stringing some stuff together, dude. Shout out Galaxy <laughs> Heroes. It's it's turning into a horrible performance out of us. Yeah, no, it's gone downhill, that's for it's, sure. It started out so well. I feel like I haven't got one right in eight years. Okay. Well, like I said. I've only got one more place to go. God, I'm so upset. <laughs> Morgan L's bath, dude. <laughs> it's going to be in my nightmares. Yep. Okay, J5. Oh, we're gonna start, J5. start at the bottom, work our way up. There's no way you put a hard one next to Tristan Wren. <laughs> Alright, Logan. Your character is... Okay, I'm almost 100% certain that's Zero the Hut. It is Zero the Hut. Okay, I was scared because for some <laughs> reason it did not look like Zero to me. But I was like, there's, I don't think there's any other hut that you would show me other than Zero and Jabba. Yeah, no, I... Because <laughs> if, if, if it was someone else other than those two huts, I wasn't getting it. <laughs> oh, dude, I wouldn't get them either, so... <sighs> okay, I got one right. There you go. I got one right. Back on the board. That's I'm what you need. I'm feeling a little bit better. <sighs> okay. You uh, continuing with this A column? Might as well go A2 here. Okay, Mark. A2. Your character is... That's not two. Jeez, I like... Dude, I, I, there's I no these, way, Mark. I can't drill these in the way. That's got to be Captain Panaka, right? That is Captain Panaka. Okay, Jeez, I was going to say, because I, I always get him and uh, what's that the other dude's name? A typho. Typho. I always get those two mixed up, but that that's Panaka for sure. <laughs> I was actually going to lose my mind if you got that one wrong. <laughs> 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 but I was like, wait a minute. I was like, I thought you gave the uh, typho to me last time. So I was like, that's got to be Panaka. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll take that, man. Two in a row, getting back on track. Okay, let's uh, let's keep climbing the ladder for me. I'm gonna go go ahead and go for A4. Feel good All after right. after zero. Again, like this is this is connected to Tristan Wren. I feel like it can't <laughs> be that difficult, you know. 
<laughs> shout out to Tristan Wren. <laughs> no, don't not <laughs> shout out to him. I got him wrong. <laughs> Your character is Tarful. <laughs> that is Tarful. That's correct. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I feel so much better. Actually, I don't feel that much better because you're one turn ahead of me. So, I mean, I could definitely fold. That's for sure. Yeah, I think so. But I could. I mean, you almost folded fold. on Captain Panaka. That is true. I was like, bro. I was like, <laughs> there's no way. Okay. Oh. Are we are we continuing down the line, or are you mixing it up? Go down the line. Okay, A4 for for you, Mark. Your character is... I I don't even... (laughs) (laughs) You're darn it, bro, no way. I know, I've seen that, man. (laughs) I've seen that, man. (laughs) You know, I'm not even going to waste the time. I don't know who it is. It's Chancellor Valorum. Valorum! I've heard of that name. Yeah, it's the Chancellor before Palpatine. It's before Palpatine. I. <laughs> Valorum. I figured this one would be one that tripped you up. That one definitely tripped me up. Dang it. I think I'm out of soul. I mean, well, it, I, it depends on what you, what you gave me on, on this uh, diagonal coming up. But you still have a Jango. You have two Jangos alive still. Uh, and one with two already filled out. So, oh, if I get no. one wrong, like you're you're in a much better position because you have possible jankos. You never know. Mm-hmm. Okay, Mark, I'm still alive. I have a chance to to make it to game point. You do. We're gonna we're gonna go with G two. Keep climbing the ladder. I'm feeling good. There's no way you put a difficult one next to this Mando, <laughs> dude. There's no way you put a difficult one there. <laughs> <laughs> Logan, your character is... Oh. Uh, Dr. Pershing? It is Dr. Pershing. Dude. I found the I was easy. About to say, I found the easy ooh. one. I found the easy one. There is <laughs> like there's Mark. There's no way. There's no way you put a difficult one in this O one spot. There's no way. You think? I feel so confident. I feel so confident. In it. There's no way. You Unless think? that is the difficult one in it. <laughs> like. <laughs> oh my god. I thought I was going to sell on Pershing, not going to lie. Yeah, you were sitting there thinking for a minute. I was like, oh, no. I was like, you it's know it's this just one. because I only had Dr. Hemlock in, in, my, in oh, my mind. That makes sense. So I had to, I had to refresh Mando mm-hmm. in, in the, into my head. Okay. Yeah, yeah I got oh, you. I feel, I feel much better. Wow. Okay, Mark. You are n- not at a full reset here, but you're kind of praying that I get this next one wrong. Let's go. Uh, let's go. J two. We'll just knock uh, two birds with one stone here. Okay, Mark. J two to uh, keep some Jangos alive here. Your character is. Is <laughs> that dude? Uh... <laughs> I. You know what's funny is. His name was probably said. I just don't remember. <laughs> Mark, I'm gonna be honest. I'm gonna be honest with you. This is one of the hardest ones on on the board. I, I'm just tell me. I'm not gonna waste my time. Gory and shard. See, I want to say that sounds familiar, but it really doesn't. I yeah, mean, I feel like I mean, maybe, but I don't. Yeah, I I wouldn't have gotten it. It's not that he's like forgettable but it's just, it's just a tough name to remember in it's my, uh, to me so very tough name actually yeah and and he's relatively new so i uh, yeah that's that's one of the hardest ones for sure yeah uh, not not the not the one that i told you about at the start though <laughs> okay mark this is this is for history right here for all the marbles and the thing is if i don't get this right 
if I don't get this right, one, you have a chance to still get a Django, and two, I don't have any chance and I have to just sit here and go through characters until I hopefully win. Just go one by one? Uh, please, please are end you, it here, man. Please are end you it ready here. for this? Give me, give me a one, Mark. Logan, your character is... <laughs> oh, Mark, Mark, I want to thank you for being here. <laughs> I want to thank you for being here. I want to, I want to thank the viewers for watching. I want to thank you for uh, giving me this opportunity. <laughs> um, this dude is just so it's so BM at this point. Whew. Agent Kolar. <laughs> it is Agent Kolar. Oh my God! Thank dude, the Lord. Dude, that's so funny that we both had him. <laughs> yeah. And the fact that you got him first, so like that is so funny, dude. <laughs> I because I seen him on your board, I was like, I put him on mine too. Did you, did you know he was right there? I did. I knew he was right there. So you knew it was basically over. Yeah, that's why oh, I was like, man. I saw on Jacosta knew, and yeah. you had the J five and the A four. I was like, I knew Doctor Pershing was there. And then. Uh, Agent Kalor was over there, so oh, I knew man. I did. Dude, I feel so, uh... <laughs> man. Thank you, Mark. Thank you for putting Agent Kolar in that spot. I feel like we my actually... logic was correct, though, that this was probably the easiest row you had, or the easiest oh, possible yeah. Django you had. Yeah, this is definitely the row where you. I definitely like think that you had a chance, like the best mm -hmm. chance possible. Um. So yeah, now that was definitely your uh, your best chance at a Django right there. Okay, so. well, before we get out of here though, because I mentioned it, I don't want to get out of here without at least having you attempt this character that I figured oh. you had zero chance on. Yeah. So yeah, I, I will also <laughs> I'll pull it up for the viewers as well, so they can so they can see it, but. <laughs> Unfortunately, Mark, it was in the O five spot. So it okay. like your Django was not gonna be possible in this bottom row anyway. Yeah. Uh so Mark your character is Oh dude, yeah, no way. <laughs> this it's, so it's another handmaiden. No way. Yeah, no, nah, I'm not getting that Do one. Do you know any other handmaiden name other than Sabe, Corday, and Dorme. Nope. This is Rabe. Oh, so they just like all rhyme? <laughs> yeah, so yeah, that's that's the point. Okay, of it. There's like, uh, I actually, actually forget exactly how many there are, but yeah, they all. They, <laughs> well, the thing is, they changed their name to be like that, to like yeah, go along yeah. with Padme. So yes, yeah, that is, that is the one where I was like, he doesn't have a single shot of getting this. That's actually interesting. I didn't know that. So, <laughs> so hopefully, you remember it in the future. I doubt it. But and we'll maybe see. on the next bounty boards, I'll put another handmaiden that you don't know, and we'll see if you can get it. <laughs> <Just kidding. laughs> so study up on your handmaidens and what they look like. Oh my gosh! Because <laughs> to be <laughs> honest, I know the handmaiden names, but I wouldn't have known that that was her. Oh yeah. yeah. Uh, just because I I haven't uh, actually checked what they look like, I just know them from the uh, from the Padme books. So yeah. But hey, we're exiting out of bounty boards with a win. Um, dude, I'm I'm honestly happy we got Django. I was gonna be disappointed yeah. if we didn't leave with a Django, so I'm not mad at it. Yeah, it was it. It just wasn't gonna be a good look from us if if we yeah. went into this specifically said that we made it easier so we could get a Django and still didn't get a Django. Mm -hmm. 
We yeah, played no, it close, it. though. We played we, it close. We did, but you got to the easy row for like you. We really dragged it out there for a minute, but yeah. Hey, we we got to Django. That's the important part. Well, that is it for Bounty Boards. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this segment. If you were playing along with us, let us know if you got a Django and where. We would very much like to know and kind of get your guys' Star Wars knowledge as well. And with that, we will send you back to the boys in the studio. Wow, that was an absolutely intense game of Bounty Boards with Logan being the first person to get Django historic moment for not only the segment but for logan as well but now before we get into our next segment it is time to honor all of our channel members now presenting the hologram of fame Yo, Logan, I'm really liking that mustache. It looks like growing in uh, quite nice. Yeah, man, it's going well, but I just really wish the rest of my facial hair would grow. Well, you know, for $4.99, you can become a channel member and grow facial hair like me. What? Also, when you become a channel member, you get an exclusive bonus segment every time the Galactic Core releases. Mark, I already know that. What are you doing? And you also get outtakes and behind the scenes videos and special Discord role and chats. And you also get recognized on the hologram of fame and increased odds to have your questions and your hot takes picked. If you want to grow facial hair like me, make sure you become a channel member today. And now we will send it down the hall to Mark for the Netherworld. Welcome to the Netherworld. In this segment, we will be taking a deep dive into characters in Star Wars. This time around, going a bit mysterious here, we'll be talking about Darth Plagueis. He's one of the most mysterious characters in Star Wars and is responsible for Palpatine essentially being able to cheat death. So, let's go ahead and get into the origins of Darth Plagueis. Uh, Darth Plagueis was a Force-sensitive male Mun, Dark Lord of the Sith, and master to Darth Sidious. Plagueis was trained by Sith Master Darth Tenebrus and acquired a vast amount of knowledge about the dark side and its teachings during this time. It is unknown what happened to his master, but according to the Rule of Two, we can only assume that Plagueis betrayed his master. It is also unknown when Plagueis chose Sheev Palpatine to become his apprentice, but they both benefited from each other. They worked together for years trying to unlock the secret to immortality. Plagueis taught Palpatine about the rule of two and it being their way of life and that it's the only way for them to survive one serving as bait to the dark side and one as the vessel then they could figure out the secret to immortality plagueis did attempt to forge a force dyad between himself and sidious but he was unsuccessful in his attempt plagueis believed the answer to immortality lied within science so he conducted in-depth research into the biological underpinnings of life. The Sith, and especially Plagueis, denied the fact that death was a natural part of life, which was the Jedi way of saying it, and longed for the ability to live forever. Plagueis was so obsessed with this that he was blind to the early signs that his apprentice was planning on betraying him. According to Darth Sidious' book, The Secrets of the Sith, Plagueis discovered a form of immortality through transference, a force power that allowed the user to transfer his conscious to another body, essentially using 
different bodies as vessels for his own conscience. Plagueis had arranged for his apprentice, Darcidius, to become senator of Naboo with Sidious, or as we know him, Sheev Palpatine, being elected in 52 BBY. Plagueis was still training Sidious while he was serving as a senator of Naboo during this time as well. And according to Palpatine, Plagueis was so powerful, he could use the force to influence the midi-chlorians to create life and keep the ones that he cared about from dying. Plagueis developed a belief that the force could strike back at him for how powerful he was. And soon his only fear came to be true as his apprentice Darth Sidious broke into his apartment one night and disposed of him in his sleep, such as the rule of two. After this, Sidious gained the title of Sith Master for himself. Plagueis couldn't react fast enough to prevent his own demise. Sometime before or after uh, Plagueis' demise, Sidious had gained a new apprentice, uh, stolen from Mother Towson, Darth Maul. Even though Plagueis met his demise, his legacy was passed on to Darth Sidious, and everything that Plagueis had taught him and everything that he had researched was passed on to Sidious. Uh, Sidious inherited 114D, uh, Plagueis' protocol droid assistant, uh, the rank of Sith Master, and all of Plagueis' studies, which includes his research into the biological underpinnings of life to cheat death. Plagueis' force abilities uh, included influencing midichlorians, being able to transfer his conscious to another body and you know use it like a vessel in a way. And he may even have the power to see in the future. This is according to Darcidius, so it's not confirmed. But according to Sidious, Plagueis could look into the future. Plagueis is a super mysterious character within Star Wars because there's not much known about him, especially early life. But we, we do know is that he was a super powerful character. Um, and he eventually became the reason why Palpatine was able to live for so long and cheat his death. Plagueis actually wanted to rule together with Sidious for thousands of years as his ultimate end goal, but he never got to achieve it. Plagueis was responsible for creating the idea of cheating death, and while he didn't live to see that happen, Sidious did, with a minor, some minor setbacks. It wasn't completely 100% perfect and tested. There were some flaws in it. But Plagueis really couldn't imagine his own apprentice betraying him, which is obviously what happened. Plagueis is a super mysterious character, which is one of the reasons I kind of thought about doing him, because I really, you know, you don't really know much about him as a character. Nothing's explained, his early life, there's nothing there. But this is why I chose him to kind of take a little bit of a deeper dive, uh, see everything we know about him, and explain it to you guys. That's it for the Netherworld in this episode. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this character breakdown of Darth Plagueis. Let us know down in the comments below. And with that, we'll send you back to the boys in the studio. That was a great character breakdown out of Mark. Dude, you really do kill it every single time in that segment. You know, I can't help it. I mean, I think I might be him. I don't know if you're going to feel that way after this quiz. Because I'm about to have you try to name the battalion of these five clones. Are you prepared? I don't know if I'm prepared. I'm horrible with clones. <laughs> but we'll, yeah. we'll yeah, see, I man. I don't know, man. I tried to go somewhat easy on you. But uh, I've got some, I got some other ones in there. Mark, your first clone is Bly. Cause I, I don't remember like any battalions. That's the tough part. Mm -hmm. I mean, even after quizzing me multiple times, you don't remember a single battalion? Well, I know, like, the 212th and the 501st. <laughs> Dear God, bro. Um, 
That is unreal. Because obviously I know he's under uh, Ayla's Sakura's like battalion, but I feel like it's the two something. <laughs> the two something is that your final guess? Yeah, I think it starts with a two. I don't know. <laughs> God, maybe this was a bad quiz for you. It Mark, it is the three twenty seventh. Okay, yeah, it probably was a bad quiz, but <laughs> <laughs> all right. <laughs> well, mm. let's get this over with quick then, since you, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> since this might be rough. Mark, your next one is Neo. What? <laughs> I don't. Do you not know who Neo is? He's got the probably one of the coolest helmets. Not off the top of my head. You have any sort of guess then? <laughs> Five oh first. <laughs> Mark gets the ninety first. Ninety first. This is tragic, dude. You really got to study up on this. <laughs> Maybe we I need I need you deep in Wikipedia over the over the weekend here. <laughs> okay. We'll see. I, we'll see I you're gonna come straight off your studies at Coruscant U, and you're going right to the Wikipedia books, <laughs> studying your clone battalions. That's what I need out of you. Your next clone is Thorn. I don't know if it's like a like a number. I, I just said a Coruscant guard. I don't know like. It, it's not a number. So Coruscant guard is correct, Mark. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I didn't know if it was a number or not. I was so. about to say that's a layup. That is a layup. Yeah. No, I knew it was Coruscant guard. I didn't know if it had a number, or so but we'll take that one. Okay, you're one for three. Let's see if you can possibly luck out on another one. Uh, your next one, Mark, Denel. That name is not ringing a bell. <laughs> Two twelve. Mark, that's unfortunate. That was the five oh first. No, <laughs> I guessed the wrong one. <laughs> oh man. Okay, one for four, Mark. Let's see if you can luck out again. Your final one is Pons. Pons, I've heard of him. I've heard of that name. Yes, you, uh, a, a very many moons ago, you had me guess him on a guess the Star Wars character. Many moons. And I got it correct. Who would have thought? <laughs> you already brought a 501st. <laughs> so you haven't brought a 212th yet. So I'm going 212th again. <laughs> Mark hits the 91st again. Okay, yeah, no. I, <laughs> <laughs> I actually wouldn't have known that. I would have guessed course on guard for him, but. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I didn't know it off the top of my head. I got uh, one, so I'll take that. Yeah, I mean, hey. That's you, one better You got one. one. It was the gimme, though. It was the it gimme. Was, it was the gimme, but you know what? I'll take any gimme I can. Technically, get. Bly and Neo are gimmies. If you know any battalion numbers, but you literally don't, so I guess they weren't <laughs> gimmies. <laughs> no, not really. I thought it would have been something, but hey, I mean, <laughs> one for five out of you isn't too bad. So next time, we'll stay away from the clones for you. <laughs> you def definitely stay away. <laughs> but now we'll go ahead and send you guys over to our final segment climbing the ranks. Welcome to Climbing the Ranks. In this segment, me and Logan will be tier listing things within Star Wars. Now our tier list consists of five different tiers, ranging from Commander, Captain, Lieutenant, Sergeant, and our very bottom tier, Cadet. Now this time around, we will be tier listing Star Wars video games. Now we have eight video games picked at random. Um, I'm a big video game guy. Logan is as well. How how you feeling right now, Logan? You excited to get into this uh, tier list today? I, I am excited. I, uh, granted, these aren't completely random because we definitely had to choose things that, like, we have experience playing. Mm -hmm. But there are things that we have experience playing that we did leave out. Yeah, of course. So this is eight of probably. 
it's like a good spread, I would say, uh, but definitely uh, ones that we that we have some experience on. So I, I'm excited for it for sure. Well, let's not waste any more time and get right into this tier list. Now, our first video game that we have up, Star Wars Battlefront 2 from 2005. Now, obviously, this is like the goaded Star Wars video game to a lot of people. I mean, this game is just great. There's the, the campaign, Fallen the Five of First, beautifully done. Um, the multiplayer was just great. The maps, the... The time setting, you know, around Revenge of the Sith. I love that era. I mean, everything about this game, I just love. Yeah, because you get a lot of the... Of that era, you get a lot of things within the game built around that. Like, you get interesting planets that you've only really seen in Revenge of the Sith, and you barely see them. Like, you see my Gido. You see a bit of Felucia. Uh, you see Polis Massa, which isn't even a planet, but they have it as a playable map in the game. When literally all you see is Padme give birth on it. Like, yeah, I don't know. I think that's sweet. Uh, the maps are really good. And the different, uh, the different units across each era uh, for, for each team, sweet. The heroes, great. Are there some that would have been cool to be included? Sure. Uh, but I think the ones that are in it are awesome. Um, it's definitely like... It's... <laughs> the, the combat and everything is all dated. Like, it's 2005. Yeah, you can feel but it. But I, I think the fun of it holds up today. 18 years later like it it yeah. holds up so i and also like you said the campaign unreal <laughs> unreal so and i always have to say this anytime i talk about this game galactic conquest the greatest video game game mode of all time yeah how they didn't do it in the new one i have no idea it's phenomenal uh yeah and the space battles are great too as well so yeah I don't know, Mark. I think you saw this coming for me, but this is Easy Commander for me. This is the greatest Star Wars video game of all time, in my opinion. Yeah, no, I mean, I can't disagree, man. I mean, this video game is top tier for a lot of people, and for good reason. All the reasons you stated, all the reasons I stated, I mean, yeah, I don't even need to say anything else about it. Go ahead and throw it in the Commander tier. All right, Mark. Now for our second Star Wars game, we got Lego Star Wars The Complete Saga. Now, obviously, we all played this as kids, I'm, I'm assuming. Um, this is a lot, of, uh, a lot of my childhood right here, just playing through the levels. I remember being frustrated at some of them because I couldn't figure out what to do. Because as a kid, some of those puzzles were a little difficult, I'm not going to mm-hmm. lie. I mean, and the... The combat was even difficult too at a young age, so it was definitely a challenge and maybe forced me to rage a little bit, but <laughs> despite all of that, I think this game is great. I mean, I don't have a problem with it. For it being a kid's game, even playing it now, I mean, I still enjoy playing it now, going back mm-hmm. to it, just trying to relive some memories. The level designs were really good. There was definitely There's definitely a bit of difficulty to them. So, I for the now for where I would put it on a tier list, I kind of want to wait to see what you have to say about it. But because mm-hmm. I'm still I'm on the fence about Commander and Captain right now. Yeah, I mean this is this is definitely seen as the best Lego game. Uh, I will reserve my opinion for possibly uh, maybe some other things on this list. So I won't. Uh, <laughs> spoil my opinion there but i will say i do i I agree with you that uh you know as a kid it can definitely be like the combat can be frustrating uh some of the puzzles i think it's so funny how this even as an adult this game can be very easy and very challenging i think like you know 
mini kits, there's still oh, yeah. like some mini kits I don't think I'll ever find without <laughs> looking it up. But then now, like as an adult, the combat is the easiest thing to cheese in the world. You just ground oh, smash yeah. the whole time. Yeah. Uh, so it's the cheese. Yeah. Uh, but I think my my main opinion on this game specifically for the longest time has just always been uh i'm not a huge fan of the changes they made to the prequel uh levels they they made some minor changes but also some major changes uh to those levels specifically and i'm not a huge fan of those changes and i was never because i played uh lego star wars 2 uh more than i played the complete saga i played the complete saga uh, as an adult like a couple years ago maybe not even two uh yeah so i've played it pretty pretty recently uh but lego star wars 2 was the main one that i had a lot of playtime on and that's you know still got the same levels uh the original trilogy levels and i always felt like those levels were just a, a little bit worse than the original uh, prequel ones i yeah, think they just really- linger a little too long and yeah, I just yeah. don't think they're as fun and as engaging. So uh, I think that's the little bit of a step down. But the overall content in the game and just the the fun that you can have on it uh, can't be overstated. Uh, so it, uh, this is, like I said, it's very highly regarded as the best uh, LEGO Star Wars game. But... I would personally say Captain. Uh, it's not one that I can feel comfortable putting in Commander. Yeah, and it's just it's a tough spot because they do make like the pod race, for example. Like it was, I feel like it was more challenging in the original mm-hmm. than it was in the Complete Saga and different stuff they, like that. They changed um, the gunship level in Episode Two. Yeah, they definitely that that made it easier. But I do, I do like having all six movies in one game. Yeah, yeah. I think it was more of the convenience that was better because instead of having two different, you know, like separate discs for the prequels and originals, you had just one for all six. Yeah. Um. Obviously, the hundred percenter was insane, but I'm honestly. Because I'd be hard pressed to not put in a commander, but I think. I think I might be cool with Captain. Okay. You know what? Go ahead and throw it in Captain's here. Now moving on to our third video game, Star Wars The Force Unleashed. Now I've talked about this before. This holds a special place in my heart. It's probably my favorite Star Wars video game. Mm-hmm. I mean, this is the game that I remember the most playing while I was growing up. I mean, I... the. F- it really caught my eye because of the character Star Killer. I, I've always loved his character. Um, how powerful he was in the game. Just being able to take down armies of stormtroopers or Felucians or rebels. I mean, all all these different kind of factions and like level design you had to go through. You just tear through everything the because we never like really had that before in uh in a video game i love the level designs i thought they were really good i liked how it had two different endings a good and a bad um and then the dlc on tatooine and hoth i really like those dlcs a lot and picking the bad ending having that like like that armor that he has at the end dude that's like the coolest look i've seen in star wars and i don't think it'll ever <laughs> be topped i think that is the coolest look for any character so uh what do you gotta say about it here logan i mean you definitely have more of a say in this one than i do uh, i have played it but it's been a very long time since i've played it so i don't have the uh, co- complete memory of it but i will say so obviously like just the feeling that you get playing as star killer and having that just you feel invincible yeah uh, is 
to a lot of people a feeling you really want to get out of a video game. Uh, so, and especially one in Star Wars. Yeah, for sure. Uh, and then Sam Witwer's performance as Star Killer, phenomenal. It's amazing. I it's it is phenomenal. So, yeah, I don't want to speak on it too much because I don't want to have any like uneducated opinions because maybe I don't fully remember certain things. So I'm completely okay going with your your opinions here and where you really want to put it. My my initial thought would be Captain. Uh just just because and I'm only saying that it in my opinion, because Battlefront 2 is such a high bar that it's tough for me to even put anything toward that tier. <laughs> you know? Oh, yeah. And I get what you mean. I just, because I'm so biased towards this game. I love this mm-hmm. game. Like, this is probably my, like I said, my favorite Star Wars game. So, obviously, my initial reaction for being an absolute fanboy for the game for Star Killer is to put in Commander. But I also get what you're saying. So, I kind of get a, I feel like I got to bring myself back down to Earth a little bit here <laughs> or bring myself back down to Coruscant. A little bit yes yes um and i think i just gotta go throw it in captain even though i want to throw it in commander battlefront to your right is just a high standard for all video games here so yeah i'm absolutely cool with the captain tier for force unleashed okay we'll go ahead and throw it there now for our fourth game here uh star wars galaxy of heroes <laughs> uh, we know this game quite a bit <laughs> obviously the viewers you guys know about this game quite a bit too or at least some of you at least i'm assuming most though Mm -hmm. um man where do i even begin with this game (laughs) Um, you want me to start you can start you can start this one (laughs) okay so for those of you that don't know uh the star wars cs channel here the home of the galactic core did start as a star wars galaxy of heroes youtube channel uh, and it was a pretty interesting experience for an entire year. And then now we're here with the Galactic Core. Uh, definitely happy to be here and not still playing Galaxy of Heroes for videos. But I digress. Uh, the, vi- the, the, the game... The game is a mixed bag. Uh it is the it's the typical mobile game yeah. where it is the most pay to win thing you have ever seen in your entire life. <laughs> it's I mean, bad. it is bad. Uh, but I do like the actual gameplay and the gameplay mechanics of it. I like the turn based battles. Uh, I love the amount of characters they have in the game. I have so much character knowledge because of this game. Um, I, there's, I've got plenty of gripes with it. Uh, I do want to be a bit positive, though. And like I said, I think the actual gameplay of it is great. Uh, I do really like it. I have so much fun with it. There's a competitive mode in it. Super fun to play. I mean, I don't really have any complaints there. The main complaints are that it's so insanely pay to win, which to me is actually fine because that's the only way like a game like that is going to be able to stay around. Is they like mo- That's why mobile games are like that. Yeah. Uh, I think that the way that it's played where like... It, you have to be playing every single day to make sure you don't fall behind. Uh, you're, it, you're basically indebted to your guild to be able to keep up and progress in the game. It takes incredibly long to progress, in, especially in certain aspects of it. Uh, it's, it's a mixed bag. I don't want to go too deep. I could literally make a... <laughs> three hour long video about galaxy of heroes right now on the spot if i needed to i did videos on it for so long that i really could but i my initial reaction obviously you can uh let let your opinions go here in a in a second but my initial reaction i would put it in uh in sergeant i would not put it in cadet 
because I do enjoy the game. Uh, but I think there's a lot of things that could be changed to make it better and a lot of things that could be added to make it better because I think it's missing a lot of things that should be in it. Uh, yeah, I agree. I mean, I-, I could sit here and harp on the negatives all day because <laughs> I have quite a few of them. I mean, like you said, being you're basically indebted to your guild, like you said. I mean, you... <laughs> You have to literally get on every day. Make sure you join the territory war, the territory battle. Make sure you set defenses. Make sure you attack. Um, and then Grand Arena. You got to make sure you're on every single day, like checking, making sure that you're on top of everything. And that's the worst part about it, I think. That mm-hmm. Because I just, you get extremely like burnt. And some days when I'm sitting here, I'm like, dude, I got to do my dailies. So I just sit here and just mindlessly do them. Like, I do them as quick as I can to just yeah. get them done with and over with. Because I didn't want to be on the game like that for that day, for example. But no, the game, the gameplay is good. Honestly, it is. I mean, it can be a little rage inducing when you get the RNG factor and all that stuff. But yeah, as is with turn based combat, it's just kind of how it goes. Um, and the amount of like at, at this point with the amount of like knowledge you have to know, like I don't know everybody's kit. I'm never gonna know everybody's kit. Yeah. So when I'm when I go to throw something in a battle and it doesn't work, I'm like. Oh, like my character, like my team got countered by this because of this, and I'm like, well, I didn't know that, like, yeah, and I'm like, or I forgot about it. I just, yeah, and I forgot, and I don't yeah. want to sit here and, you know, study everybody's kit down to a T. Like, I just don't want to do mm. that, and I don't have the time for that anyway. But, um, you know, there's a lot of di- different things that's like kind of annoying about the game. But I recently got to Jedi Knight Luke a couple. I mean, it might have a couple days ago. I don't remember exactly what day it was, but I got Jedi Knight Luke unlocked. And every time you get a character unlocked, you just get this feeling where it's like, dude, I finally accomplished my goal here. Yeah. Now I'm ready to move on to the next one. And I'm still kind of in that phase a little bit, but I'm starting to drift away from that phase and being back into the whole, the, I'm, I'm in the grinder again, essentially. Mm-hmm. I mean... But just that feeling of getting a new character that's, like, powerful, I mean, nothing can really top that feeling, so. Yeah. But. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's such a grind of a game, it's. And that's really what brings it down for me, is just, <laughs> I'm not opposed to a grind, but this game's grind is on a whole nother level of any grind that I've ever done, like, on any yeah. video game. So, now nah, I'm. I'm absolutely cool with throwing in the sergeant tier here. All right. Now on to our fifth Star Wars video game here, uh, Jedi Fallen Order. I, you know, my, ri- okay, so when I first played this game, I'll just start from the beginning. First bought this game, I was hyped. Finally, a new single player game for Star Wars. I hopped on. I don't want to say it's a dark, it's not Dark Souls, but it's a little bit similar to that in the mm-hmm. combat style. I hopped on and played it, and I'm not going to lie. I beat it, but I hated my life. I hated playing it. <laughs> I did not have fun because I, <laughs> I was so used to the Force Unleashed. That's kind of what I was expecting, something yeah. like that. And that's not what I got at all, so I was like, I didn't like it. So I beat it, didn't touch it again. <sighs> then I came back 100% and it did everything. And I didn't have as bad of a time with it that time. So then I'm like, well... Let me do New Game Plus on the hardest difficulty Jedi Grandmaster. And I had gotten better at the game. I kind of figured out how it works, how the mechanics work, and all that stuff. And I actually didn't mind it that time. Like, honestly, I actually didn't mind it. I had fun. And then I, <laughs> right before Jedi, uh, <laughs> Jedi Survivor came out, I played this game one more time <laughs> on Jedi Grandmaster, but I didn't do it on New Game Plus. I started fresh in the beginning. No abilities, no nothing. To make sure that I was prepared for this. And that might have been the most fun I had on that game. Mm -hmm. I understood the combat. I figured out how it worked. I know different enemies' weaknesses. I knew how to beat bosses. I knew their movesets. And I'm not going to lie. The characters have grown on me. Especially after Survivor. But we're not talking about Survivor right now. We're talking about Fallen Order. And the characters started to grow on me. I didn't like Cal at first. And after playing through the game the third time, getting ready for Survivor, I'm not going to lie, I was slowly becoming a fan. 
I'm not going to lie. I think his story with him surviving Order 66 and that, and that, that scene where you're running away from the clones on the, on the Venator, um, I mean, that's just great. It's, and you hear like Anakin, I believe it's Anakin Dark Deeds, I believe that's what's playing in the background. Mm-hmm. I mean, that was, dude, I got like chills playing that. It was insane. But him surviving Order 66, going through what he went through in his life, and being able to finally like reconnect with the Force and start taking down Inquisitors. I mean, he was holding his ground by the end of the game with Inquisitors. But then Darth Vader shows up and completely tanks all of your progress, and you realize just how weak you are because you can't yeah. touch them. <laughs> but despite all of that, I, th- I think this game is honestly pretty good. The story is great. The combat felt better as I got better with it and understood it. And the, I thought the planets were pretty cool, too. We got to be on Dathomir. That was really cool. Um, Kashyyyk, obviously, and Bogana, some new planets. Zeph- I hate Zepho. One thing I hate about this game, and I still hate about it to this day, is Zepho. Navigating that planet is the worst thing ever. <laughs> <laughs> but I'll leave it at that. What do you, what do you got to say? Well, I guess... I mean, you can talk about the characters a little bit, I guess. Yeah, I th- this is a two man show here, but this is one of those games that we threw in uh, because it just it it's one of those games that has to be shown in this. Uh, but I haven't played it, and to be blunt with it, I don't plan on playing it just because it's just not the not quite the type of game I play. Yeah, uh, but I've essentially only heard good things about it the only bad things i feel like i've heard about it is when it came out like like bugs and stuff which just happens with basically any game now so yeah i'm not uh i don't have any strong opinions on it as a game uh the characters do seem uh, pretty cool though and now there being two games and most likely a third coming out gives so much to the characters that I could see why people uh, are really getting attached to this whole this whole storyline essentially so I'm completely leaving this up to you like I said it's usually a two man show here but this one genuinely does have to be up to you uh, Force Unleashed at least I had some experience although mm-hmm. it's been a very long time this one I have zero so up to you oh man where do I want to throw this I mean, you you really you like have you have the knowledge of what's coming next uh, of of the the rest yeah. of the of the games included on this list, so this you can kind of decide. Yeah, because I really like this game. I really do. Like this is a good game. I uh, hmm. and also Grease is a great character. I'll just throw that out there. Mm-hmm. He's probably my favorite character in the whole series so far, but <laughs> that, that's besides the point. I might have to, I might have to throw some captain tier. I'm not gonna lie. I mean, this. You think so? I, I might have to. I, I. It's hard for me not because I feel like if I put it in lieutenant, that's too low. I, yeah. I really do genuinely enjoy this game now. So you're putting it on force unleashed here. I might have to because I do really like this game. I'm not gonna yeah. lie. Like, I, and this game does have replayability value, like quite a bit within it. I, you know what? I'm not gonna linger on it anymore. We're thrown in the captain tier. Okay. I I have to go with you. I have to trust your uh, I th- trust your opinion on it. Yeah, I think with the gameplay and the story and just everything, it I I it, I'd be hard pressed not to throw in captain. So I'm just not gonna linger on it anymore. Captain tier. <laughs> All right, now for our six Star Wars game, uh, Lego Star Wars: The Skywalker Saga. One gripe I have with this game, no multiplayer. That was a bit of a letdown, I will say. Um, now for the positives. Uh, over the shoulder cam, I thought that was actually really... It was very different, but I actually kind of liked it. Um, and it fit with what the game was trying to do. Mm-hmm. I will say some of the levels and the open world felt a little empty at times. Uh, they didn't 
in some parts the open world was good and in some parts it wasn't like some planets it was better in some planets than others like when i went to exegol in that game exegol was a really cool planet for open world stuff um coruscant they had a bunch of different levels on coruscant i thought that was really cool too that was pretty well done but i don't know some of the planets i'm trying to think like because there were some planets that just felt kind of empty like jakku i I think jakku was one was one that just kind of i mean obviously it doesn't have much going on in the movie but yeah it didn't really have much going on either for it in the open world so i was kind of i was kind of bored 100 percenting that planet um there was another one i forget but i like the combat but the open world and level design kind of brings it down for me a little bit here uh what uh, how are you feeling about this game i think it's i i think this game with the expectations of it uh when it was announced and what what people thought we were getting it definitely disappointed more than uh, it actually impressed. Because I just, uh, I mean, like you were saying, the level design is not too great. I think it focuses way too much on... The, it, it seemed like they put more effort into the kyber bricks in the open world than they did in the actual levels that you're playing. I think they probably did, because it felt like it for some of the bricks. It felt like they didn't have a whole lot of... There wasn't a whole lot of nods back to the original games. Yeah. Uh, which, uh, not that you had to, like, copy those levels, but, you know, make them somewhat similar. I feel like there's a lot of things that are left out that should have been in as levels that that were in the past like you're skipping over massive parts of the movies like they don't have the opening to revenge of the sith as a level which is one of the better ones in the original games uh the the boss fights to me are all exactly the same uh they're they they kind of they had this whole sort of marketing thing of how many characters are going to be in the game but they all feel the same except for the look which to their credit the old games were like that basically all the other like <laughs> the other games all the characters in it they all look different but they essentially all had the same mechanics or yeah there was like four different types of character. Uh, So I don't think that's like a bad thing, but it would have been nice to have something uh, just tiny to kind of differentiate between some, a a lot of uh, the characters. But yeah, I mean, I don't know. Uh, uh, Dude, I could put this in cadet purely because it doesn't have online multiplayer and when did this come out 2021 something like absolutely that. awful uh obviously i'm not gonna put it in cadet um i was just trolling on that but <laughs> <laughs> uh, i would say lieutenant is a good spot i think it's it dropped the ball on what it could have been but i don't think it was awful mm-hmm. and i still enjoyed playing it but there's a lot of parts where I feel like they could have uh, they could have definitely improved upon and they definitely could have been better I, I mean the the whole aspect of like this this game was made to be played by one player and yeah. but then they had to make it two player and they made it two player in the worst way ever like Revenge of the Sith Anakin versus Obi Wan. You, not that these games have to be like fully with the continuity of the movies, because even like even uh, the old ones weren't completely like that. 
But, like, why in the Anakin versus Obi-Wan battle are we having C-3PO and R2-D2 run around and do things? Yeah, that that was probably my biggest disappointment with this game was that... Because one, like... one person... If you're playing a two-player, one person is Obi-Wan and the other person is stuck with R2-D2 or C-3PO. Yeah. Like, like, that's just not... That's just not fun for the other person. Yeah, I, I don't know. It's... It's... I mean, they, they dropped the ball on it for sure, but it's yeah. not it's not the worst thing I've ever played. I can tell you that. Yeah, no, I I mean, I 100% of this game, so obviously I enjoyed it. It was like my comfort game. I had just, when I wanted to chill for a couple hours, I'd throw this on and I would just chill. Mm-hmm. Um, Obviously, like we talked about, it does have its downfalls, but overall i don't think it was a complete failure or flop i think the expectations were just a little too high for it and what they were kind of marketing with the open world was just they oversold it to us and i think they oversold it and our expectations for it were too high i think that's a combination of those two that kind of made people feel a certain way about it Mm -hmm. but like i said i don't think it completely flopped i still enjoyed it i had fun with it i found my own different fun with it so and i played it by myself so obviously i played it how the game was meant to be played so yeah um i'm absolutely cool with throwing it in the lieutenant tier here it's a solid game now our seventh game here star wars battlefront 2 uh 2017 rocky start for this game oh yeah and i'm and i'm not gonna lie i i bought this game i was a huge fan of 2015 i I felt like I was one of the best players in the world. I'm not going to lie. I had that big of an ego. <laughs> <laughs> so in going into this game, I was stoked, dude. I couldn't wait. I hop into it, pay to, pay to win, uh, pay to get all these different abilities. And, and it, it, the, I don't know. It's, I didn't like the way it felt at first. I, I didn't like the way it felt. I didn't like the pay to win stuff and like everybody having these maxed out cards while I got one little gray card the most like the one upgrade that i could get on like uh my assault class for example mm-hmm. and i ultimately didn't play this game for very long i i quit i was done with it before they made all the changes i i just didn't play it and then i finally jumped into it when we got back into it after all the changes that had been made and anakin was in and uh all this different stuff when we were playing those co-op missions I don't believe they're called co-op missions, but they were like the we get out of the four people and you would battle like the AI droid uh, different eras. Oh yeah. Um. So we were playing that, and I had a blast. I mean, that was a lot of fun. We were playing heroes versus villains, get absolutely dunked on by people who have been playing the game for years. <laughs> we were getting we were getting destroyed, and the the rage was real in that. But that that was probably one of some of the most fun times I've had. Is just us chilling here playing going back to battlefront 2 and feeling the changes that they had made and the effort that they had put in to make the game good and what it should have been in the first place and anakin should have been in day one obi-wan should have been in day one grievous and dooku probably should have been in day one all the like the characters that they added later should have been in day one but they did end up adding them eventually, so I'm not going to, like, harp on it too much because I did add them, which was really nice, so. But, nah, this game is, uh, is really good. I'm very upset that they cut support for it. Yeah. A while ago, I'm still upset about it to this day, but I'll leave it at, I think this game revived itself, and it it overall turned out to be a great game by the end of its life cycle, so. I I think to me this is the best uh multiplayer Star Wars experience since Battlefront 2 2005. Oh yeah, I agree. Uh I I also I definitely still have my my gripes with the game. Uh I mean, you touched on it about how you know, there's so many iconic characters that are missing from it. It felt like they because 2015 was all surrounded by the original trilogy. And it felt like when they brought this new one out, 
obviously the sequels are were in the middle of coming out so they were going to highlight that and then they just dragged over what they did from the previous one with the original trilogy stuck it in there had zero prequel content really uh we're missing anakin and obi-wan how do you (laughs) I mean, those you, are like. How do you not have that in the game? Yeah, those are like the most important characters in Star Wars. Some of those important yeah. characters, like, come on. It's like, wow, top three most important characters <laughs> in Star Wars: Anakin, Obi Wan, and Luke. Yeah. And you don't. You have had two one of them. Of them. <laughs> <laughs> like, I mean, dude, like the first six movies were basically about Anakin and his, the tragedy of. And well, they have Darth up. Vader, so you can... Oh, yeah, so my bad. <laughs> yeah, yeah, shot up. I mean, like, that was just... I thought that was always the worst thing uh, yeah. with the game, and the fact that all that came out, I think two, two and a half years after the game released was when they started putting that stuff out. Mm-hmm. Uh, but that era of the game was phenomenal. Uh, oh, yeah, I... it was great. It was just a, a great era of the game. I didn't play it uh, really right when it came out, so I didn't get the whole pay-to-win experience. Obviously, I can understand about that being awful. Uh, You're but, lucky you didn't get that experience. Yeah, but I'm also a, a huge uh, believer in like letting a game breathe, let, like let it take its time to really get on its feet. Because sometimes a game, especially like a mass multiplayer game, isn't going to hit right away once the masses get it. Uh, it's going to take some public opinion to really shape the game and how it's going to how it's going to be. Uh, but I love the because I love Battlefield and I love the Battlefield feel to it because I mean, it's made by Dice, so it just had that battlefield feel to it and i love that uh, i do think it's it was missing some things i i think it could have had a little bit more single player type stuff like i i feel like galactic conquest from i mean like i said greatest video game game mode of all time <laughs> i feel like that should have been included uh, i think they could have done that in some way uh, i do like a lot of these single player stuff that they that they do have within the game uh, but I also, the fact that you can't make a private lobby on the game is kind of insane to me. Yeah, it sucks. Like, the fact that they're going to have heroes versus villains, and they're especially they're going to have, like, the 2v2 heroes versus villains mode, and you're not going to have private lobbies, kind of mind-blowing to me. Uh, but I think, it, I think it has more positives than negatives uh, to me. So... Personally, I will put it in Captain. I think there's a lot to love about the game. Uh, but I could understand some people uh, disliking uh, c- certain aspects about it. But obviously, super unfortunate that uh, support got cut. Because I think it was shaping up to be absolutely amazing. Yeah, I mean, right when they cut support, that's where the game, where the game was... Peaking. Borderline peaking and borderline perfect i thought they mm-hmm. had the game at a phenomenal state at that point and they just came out with the scarif and like all that like little rogue one type stuff with it and they just said and eh, we're gonna cut support for <laughs> i don't know no reason because i don't know it's ea and i don't know what i'm not gonna get too into the whole end of that spiel but yeah i i'm just so mad because it was so it was so good i I was finally enjoying the game. I don't know. I'm not going to harp on that a lot because I just, <laughs> I could say so many other things, but we're just going to, we're just going to go ahead and throw it in that captain tier. I mean, now for our final video game here, Lego Star Wars, the video game. So this is the OG one right here. Now, Logan, I'm actually going to let you speak on this one first because I know you, Mm -hmm. this one holds a lot closer to you, so I'll let you speak on this one first. I mean, this is the best LEGO Star Wars game, in my opinion. (laughs) I think it's it's perfect. There is... I don't... I cannot say a single thing that I would change about this game. It's... The level design is amazing. 
it is i f i feel like it's the perfect length none of the levels feel like they drag to me i think it's just perfect i, I feel like they hit perfect spots within the movies for levels the uh, the only spot within the movies that i feel like they miss which they do pick up uh in future games is uh the speeder chase in episode two uh but i don't think that like takes away from the game obviously that's the only maybe thing that they missed out on in terms of the levels uh, but i mean i it doesn't get better than this <laughs> when it comes to lego games to me uh and it being the first i i don't know i think the the degree of difficulty is perfect i think it's it can be challenging but then you also just have the fun aspects of it and i mean man it's just you can't you can't get much better than it you really can't i don't know i oh my god and we we obviously both have a lot of experience playing this together as well we've done speed runs of it so much we've played it <laughs> we've played through it sitting next to each other played through it probably six or seven times oh yeah no it's and weird. i love it every time to be honest we've played this game a lot and it's fun every time and i mean we we've, we've got to say it on here we are i i don't want to say top 5 because i'm i actually don't know on that but i will yeah. say we are top 10 guaranteed top yes. 10 glitchless speedrunners of this game uh because we do play it glitchless we play it on ps2 yeah uh so any percent glitchless on ps2 uh actually w in with those uh <laughs> <laughs> uh specifications there glitchless any percent on ps2 we were number one at one point uh we have yes, been passed we but we haven't yeah. given it a shot in quite a while so yeah but phenomenal <laughs> game really to me it does not get much better i'm going to tell you right now <laughs> it's gonna go up to you i i almost know where it's gonna go i'm okay with captain I do think our captain tier is very overloaded. It is very uh, overloaded. But it's understandable because I think Battlefront 2 deserves a tier of its own. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I would love to put this in commander. <laughs> but I will understand captain because I just know like I've I've shot you down and your opinions down from putting something else on commander. Mm -hmm. So I would respect if you did the same. Uh <laughs> but I would love for it to to be in commander. I think it's I think it's the only one that possibly deserves to be next to Battlefront 2, but even then I would accept Captain because I think I don't know if anything deserves to be next to Battlefront 2. <laughs> yeah, no, I cuz I didn't I didn't play this too much. Like I played I played Complete Saga more as a kid. Mhm. Mm Cause, and, but then I've played uh, this, the OG, the Lego Star Wars the video game, a lot more with you than I think I've played it before. Yeah. And I'm not going to lie, I had a lot of fun. I mean, us, speed, us just sitting there speedrunning, like, just zoned in on the game. Like, we're not, like, like we're locked in playing mm -hmm. this game, trying to get the fastest time we possibly can. And, I mean, being top 10 speedrunners, you know, top 2 for any percent glitchless on PS2. Quite an achievement. I'm not gonna lie. I don't want to pat my pat ourselves on the back here, but I think that's quite an achievement. Um, I do think the level designs are great. Like you said, they don't linger too much, which I think Complete Saga has that problem with a couple levels here and there, where mm -hmm. especially with the original trilogy, some of those original trilogy levels are brutal trying to play through. They just take forever. Yeah, and I mean, obviously, I like this time period better prequels one two and three i like this time period a lot better um but oh man i don't know if i could throw in commander i don't know that's and i i completely understand that having battlefront 2 up there it's just and there, there are things 
because I'm trying to. So here's my comparison. I'm trying to compare this Complete Saga and Lego Star Wars video game. There are things that both do well, and I think the uh, Lego Star Wars video game does things better. While I think Complete Saga does other things better. Mm-hmm. Like there's definitely more content in Complete Saga, obviously, but yeah, I. I just don't know if I could throw in Commander. I think we might just have to keep Battlefront 2 and, like, have it in a tier of its own here. Being yeah, it, it's, the lone... it's that upper echelon. It cannot yeah. be touched, and maybe nothing ever will. Yeah, I, I, I'm i cool with having it there. So, you know what? Let's just go ahead and throw it in the captain tier here. And we'll have Battlefront 2 be the lone survivor in Commander, which I think I think is fair. Like you said, I don't think anything's gonna touch the game. I think should, it's just that. Should good. we have probably put some things in Commander? Yeah. Because it's like it's a tier list. We can we could still mm-hmm. say that like Battlefront 2 is is the is the best and like That's the true. top of that tier. But in the context of the rest of this tier list. I just nothing's nothing's close, man. Yeah, no, nah, it's. Nah, I like honestly I like it, even though our captain tier is obviously completely bloated. We have five out of the eight. In yeah. Here, I I think all the five in captain tier, they're all like equally as fun to play. I mean. Yeah. Like I, I think really that don't... I I think they none of them deserve to be lower. Exactly. Than okay. captain. Yeah, no, I agree. I. I like this list. I really do. I I don't see a problem with it. I think we got the games in the right spot. You know, if you want to let us know down in the comments if you think we got it right, because I think we got it pretty good here, but obviously everybody has their own opinions. If you don't mind, Mark, uh, my course on apartment lighting has gone out. If you could just give me a couple minutes to uh, to sort this out. Uh, I want to see. I'm going to have to go check down the hall if if other people are having this issue. Uh, okay, so no, you're good. Let, let's pause for a couple of seconds, come back, and we'll uh, collect our thoughts on this. You're good. You're good. All right, Mark. My uh, my lighting situation is fixed. We are all good. I apologize for that. Sorry, we had to uh, put the put the tier list on pause, but we have completed it. Uh, why don't you uh, go ahead and go over it one last time before we head out of here? In our commander tier, we have the lone survivor, Star Wars Battlefront 2 from 2005. And in our captain tier, we got Lego Star Wars The Complete Saga, Star Wars The Force Unleashed, Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order, uh, Battlefront 2 from 2017, and Lego Star Wars The Video Game. Now down in our lieutenant tier, we got another lone survivor, Lego Star Wars The Skywalker Saga. And in the Sergeant tier, we got Galaxy of Heroes. And we have nothing in our Cadet tier. Because I don't think there's a game that deserves to be in Cadet here. Yeah. I mean, could we have, like, moved some things down in context of a tier list? Maybe. But when we think about a tier list, we think of Cadet is just bad. And Commander is the best of the best. So that's Mm -hmm. why our tier list is kind of... uh, ended up like this it's i don't know maybe it's a weird way to go about a tier list but it's just it's just how my brain works on it so i'm not gonna that's yeah that's kind of how i feel about it too i mean all of these games have something good about them yes so that's why i feel like none of them should be in cadet yeah and maybe who knows this one i mean there's so many star wars games and some that i feel like we definitely should play and and get some experience in and maybe we could do a a second version of this because there although there haven't been many in recent years there are plenty of star wars games to to go around and experience so i would love to do this another time oh yeah for sure this is a blast you know i love playing video games so i'm definitely down to experiment with some other star wars games uh let us know what you think about our tealers down in the comments below Uh, What would you change about it? What would your tier list look like? Go ahead and let us know. And with that, we will send you back to the boys to end off the episode. That was another great episode of the Galactic Core. But now we want your guys' feedback. Go ahead down in the comments below. 
let us know what your favorite segment is, uh, not just from this episode, but from every single Galactic Core episode. Logan, what's your favorite segment? Um, I mean, I'll be honest. I feel like I have a lot of favoritism toward them all. Uh, but immediately what comes to my mind is probably overrated, underrated. Maybe that's an overrated choice, but <laughs> I really like that. But if I had to pick a second one, it's probably Bounty Boards. I, I like the concept of that. What's yours? I mean, I'm a big fan of tier lists, so I got to go climb in the ranks. I just love tier listing things, not just in Star Wars, but really anything that I can think of, which is if I had to pick a second uh, favorite, it would probably be level 10. Top 10s are, uh, mm. I enjoy making top 10s as well. Well, hopefully you guys did enjoy this episode. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. And I mean, hey, maybe become a channel member today. And with that, we will send you off. Good night, Coruscant. And good night, citizens of the Republic. <laughs>